woke up in shock to find my face covered in bandages. M my face! This can't be happening! Right, Callum? Tell me this is not happening! <laughs> right after, the doctor entered the room. Miss, unfortunately, the glass from the car window has caused extensive trauma to your skin. As the doctor continued talking, I felt myself zone out and began to panic. My face is everything! Without it, my singing career is over! Ash, it's gonna be okay. I'll help you find a way to return to the stage. I promise. Hi, I'm Ashley, and I had a dream of becoming a famous singer. I used to sing on the streets to collect a few dimes. Then one day, a handsome and polite man approached me. I'm Callum, a talent scout, and I believe with your angelic voice and rare beauty, you have the makings of a star. It was love at first sight, and not only did I gain a manager, but also a hot boyfriend. He arranged for me to perform at cafes, bars, and restaurants. It was nonstop. I enjoyed it, but I have to admit I was also, uh, exhausted. And that's when Callum suggested that I use autotune and lip sync to save my throat. Babe, I know this ain't right, but you're burned out and I can't bear seeing that. You know, it's not forever. I think that way you can focus on dressing up and letting people admire that gorgeous face of yours. Hearing this did make me feel sad, but Callum knew what he was talking about, so I trusted him. While the fire inside me to perform on a professional stage still burned strong. Then one day, he told me some unexpected good news. No more small gigs. The famous company Dream M Entertainment is holding auditions to find their next big star. I've taken care of everything. You just need to be 100% confident in performing. This was it. My time to shine has finally come. But then that evening, while driving home and practicing singing, I had an uncontrollable coughing fit. I lost focus of the road for a split second and didn't see the incoming car until everything went dark. And the next thing I knew, I was waking up at the hospital looking like Frankenstein and certain that my big dreams were now in shatters. After two months in the hospital, most of my scratches healed, but only a deep cut scar remained on my cheek. Just a few days more until the audition and I couldn't show up looking like this. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity. Can makeup cover it? Or maybe a mask? There must be something. But the doctor said I can't wear makeup until it's fully healed, as it might cause an infection. <laughs> and if I went on stage in a mask, people would certainly raise questions. Then Callum's eyes suddenly darted to the photo on the shelf. Ash, here's your answer. Get your sister to be your double until your wound heals. Y you mean Bridget? That freak? No way! Yeah, I do have a twin sister, but we aren't close, for sure. My parents divorced when we were seven, and the courts decided I'd live with dad and Bridget with mom. I had a great life with dad as he bought me any outfit I wanted. But Bridget was a tomboy and didn't care about fashion. The last time I saw her, she was wearing all faded clothes. I guess the whole moody, loner, frown-like-she's-constipated look was her vibe. I tried talking to her at college, but she always snubbed me. And just like that, we ended up being strangers, despite being siblings. And now you say I have to grovel her for help? No! I get that you guys aren't close, but surely you can put your differences aside for this once-in-a-lifetime chance at your dream? <sighs> I suppose Callum has a point. So I agreed. Only it wasn't that simple, as I didn't have Bridget's number and she refused to use social media. You know, to match her cool, unbothered vibe. Ugh. Hang on. I remember her scowling at me behind the counter at the Yo-Yo fast food once. Perhaps she still worked there? I immediately disguised myself and headed there. Oh, there she is. I started hovering around her and explained what had happened, then asked her if she'd be my double for the audition. But she didn't bother to care. Get out the way. I can't perform looking like this. Please, this is everything to me. It's none of my business. I have work to do. See, I can't just give up like this. So I ordered food and sat there and waited for her to change her mind. It was closing time already. I was about to leave when I saw Bridget and her boss quarreling with each other. My gosh, this is why it's never good to hire teenagers. I only hired you because you begged for the job. I I'm sorry, sir. I'll... <gasps> Darn it. Starting today, you will work without pay for three months. No, sir, I need money. You didn't even pay me last month. Hey, what are you doing? Go. You can work elsewhere. Don't be here with a scumbag. What? And you get lost before I report you to the cops. What you aiming at? Why do you have to work here anyway? Doesn't mom give you a big enough allowance? Don't pretend like you care. How could a spoiled girl like you ever understand? What do you mean by that? Ugh, 
Anyway, you need money, right? I can help you. Bridget didn't answer, but I saw through her Miss Frosty persona. If you replace me until I'm recovered, then I'll pay you. A big check worth ten times what you're making here. By the way, only two of us and my manager know about this, so don't worry. Then I gave her my number and told her to message me when she made a decision. She reluctantly took it, saying nothing, and just left. But that evening, a message from an unknown number popped up. Okay, I'm in. You better pay me right. I immediately called Callum and told him the good news. Now it's time to turn Bridget into a temporary me. Normally, Callum and I keep our relationship low-key to maintain professionalism. And that's the same now. We're keeping it a secret with Bridget. Callum made it clear to Bridget that all she needed to do was to look pretty and lip-sync. But geez, that girl could only moan. This crop is too tight and constricting. Stop scratching like a monkey! I showed her how to stand straight and walk like a diva. And it shocked me when she said she'd never heard of skincare. No wonder her skin was as dry as the Sahara Desert, and her pores were as deep and large as black holes. No worries. The witches here will give you a magic transformation. Wow! She looked exactly like me, just without the wound. <sighs> Even Callum was impressed. He instantly offered to help her into the car and drive her to the audition. Mm, I guess it made sense for Callum to keep her on our side. Now is not the time for stupid jealousy, Ashley. I disguised myself as Bridget's assistant and nervously waited backstage. The audition was such a nightmare. Bridget's lip syncing didn't match the pre-recorded audio, and she danced like she had two left feet. Finally, the performance ended, and the first judge to comment was David Knight, a.k.a. the music wizard, master composer, and lord of melodies. Oh, I know this guy. He's sure a demigod in real life. Your singing was dismal, and your dancing was catastrophic. Did you get lost looking for the bathroom and wander on stage by accident? Having a pretty face isn't enough to keep you here. The judge sitting next to David suddenly grabbed the mic. Wait, he's the CEO of Dream M. <clears throat> Uh, you're wrong, David. Beauty is also talent. She's a diamond in the rough and only needs a little polishing to shine. After the show, Callum was overjoyed as he informed Bridget that she'd become a talent at Dream M and would soon become an A-lister. I was so excited, too, that I flung my arms around Bridget, but she coldly pushed me away. Enough for today. Since then, the three of us agreed that Bridget would perform on stage while I would record at the studio. The bad side was about putting up with David, the difficult judge at the audition who was in charge of my recording session. The only thing going for you is your face, so why hide it behind that mask? If you must know, I didn't have time to apply any makeup. Satisfied much? Sorry, what you say? It was too early in the day to deal with such a jerk, so I stayed silent and focused on the session. Hmm... Your singing has improved significantly since the audition. It just still lacks some emotion. Haha, <laughs> thanks! My debut was just days away, but things didn't go so well. Bridget had no sense of style and appeared in the fashion column Worst Dress Lists, shaking like a leaf on stage and jumbling her words when facing impromptu interviews. So I had to set up a crash course for Bridget, but this time I taught her simple, easy-to-remember things instead of big stuff like last time. I showed her how to pair basic outfits, how to deal with the press, and most importantly, I still guaranteed her regular pay. Ash, you, um... You've helped me a lot, and I, anyway, so, uh, thanks. Oh my, she was so awkward, but that was sweet. I could gradually feel that we were actually sisters. Bridget, the main effort was still yours. Keep it up. Soon, the company began to promote Bridget, and her reputation skyrocketed. All the while, my relationship with Callum took a nosedive. At previous events, Callum used to pamper me and bring me my favorite foods. But now, he just brought Bridget's favorites. He never left her side, and they were always having cozy chats. So one day, I decided to talk straight to him about this. Callum, I have to admit that I feel kind of uncomfortable, as you're a bit too close to Bridget. Babe, I got you. I have to pretend I'm with Bridget as everyone thinks she's you. I'm doing this for your own good, so stop overthinking. Will you do it for me? I know, but I really feel insecure since I got this scar. It's like I've lost everything. Don't worry, the scar will eventually heal. The most important thing right now is you stay calm and get through this time. Ah, right. I suddenly forgot that I was working for a greater goal. 
I tried convincing myself that they were just dedicated to their work and that my wound would be healed soon and I could go back to being me. I still go to the hospital every week for follow-up and treatment. It's faded, hasn't it? I needed to escape, so I went to the studio to sing my heart out. I was certain no one would be there at this time of night, but turned out I was wrong. Surprisingly, on seeing me, that dude didn't shoo me away. Instead, he was actually pleasant. A night owl too, huh? Start singing then. I'll give you my valuable opinions. I was shocked by this approachability, but I rolled with it. David was many things, but there was no denying he was extraordinarily talented that made huge hits. I sing, and he gave me some useful tips and pointers. I believed you'd be too haughty to listen to my guidance, but it turns out I was mistaken. Well, I found you annoying at first, but I appreciate your help and I value your feedback. It seems there's actually a nice guy behind the ogre front. S sorry, what you say? I won't say it twice. Then I started humming a few lines from a song I'd written, but didn't realize I was singing it out loud until it was too late. That song is good. Whose is it? Uh, actually, I wrote it. No need to be mocking. No, I'm not at all. I didn't know you had a talent for songwriting. Come here. Let me hear the whole song. So we sat down together, and surprisingly, our vibe matched each other perfectly. Actually, you're the first person to take my ability seriously. Sorry? Hey, stop pretending! Actually, I'm not pre- Gradually, Bridget seemed to figure out how to act like me, and her popularity grew. She was no longer sluggish and paid more attention to her appearance. Even Callum mentioned how he could only distinguish us by my wound. From then on, Callum said Bridget could do it herself, so they went to the shows without me. This feeling is making me squirm. On the one hand, I want Bridget to do well to help me out. On the other hand, I'm also feeling a bit resentful that I was replaced so easily. I also miss the way Callum used to care about me. But I remember what he said the other day, and I know I shouldn't be acting like a child. So I tried to distract myself by doing what I love the most, singing. Everybody was packed with Bridget's show, so this world is mine. Woohoo! I was in the studio practicing my new song when suddenly David barged in. Can you explain to me why you're here whilst also performing on TV live? W why are you here? Does it even matter now? Who really are you? I begged him to keep quiet. Then I frantically took my mask off and told him everything. I mean, everything. As I was too shocked to make any excuses. This is insane. I know it isn't right, but, but I, I promised once my wound healed, everything would go back to normal. Singing is everything to me. David remained silent for a while, then blurted out, All right, if what you said is true, I will keep your secret. And one more thing, if you really like singing and songwriting, I can continue to help you. What do you say? Y yes, yes, totally, yes. And don't you dare lie to me. I'm not sure what I'm going to do. Yeah, swear to God. Finally, it was the follow-up day. As the doctor finished the examination, I saw him frown. I'm sorry to inform you that the scar cuts too deep. It may fade over time, but I'm afraid it won't go completely. At least in two years. I broke down. This couldn't be happening. <laughs> Not knowing what else to do, I decided to go and find Callum. But when I arrived at his house, I saw that he wasn't alone. Bridget and Callum were sitting together and slowly leaning for a kiss. Hey, I'm Madison, and I was born into a well-off family. My parents are successful entrepreneurs who always fulfill their dearest daughter's wishes. Beautiful face, supermodel figure, I have both. But unfortunately, I'm not the only one. I have a limelight-hogging twin sister, Olivia. Since elementary school, my sister has won loads of trophies for her singing. Everyone was so spellbound by her that they seemed to completely forget about me. And it didn't help when mom dressed us the same. Meanwhile, dad was always like, Whoa, I can barely tell my two princesses apart. Maddie, if your sister is tied up with her singing, you could help fill in her place in class. <laughs> Ugh, it's not funny at all. Especially when that kind of came true. Later at 14, when I was still trying to figure out what today's homework was, my sister went and won The Voice Kids. At school, everyone kept giving me gifts and praises just to walk off on me as soon as they realized I wasn't Olivia. Hey, it's not like I intentionally tricked them. Trust me, I'm just as sick and tired of all this as everyone else, so I decided to take action. Ta-da! Did you recognize me? Still Madison here. 
the one-of-a-kind Madison with pixie hair, smoky eyes, nude lipstick, and this edgy outfit. I look different, right? But... Oh, are you cosplaying Olivia and her upcoming MV? Madison, you're ruining your sister's image! I tried to be different from her, but it couldn't change the fact that I'm the twin sister of a famous singer. There's so many things I wanted to do, but just imagine if I tried out for the cheerleading team or a modeling contest. People would be, look at the tragic Olivia wannabe. <sighs> the name Olivia gradually became something that haunted me, and now she's constantly gaining in fame while I remain in her shadow. I have my own dream of becoming a model too, and I've gone to every audition I could, but so far, no luck. Oh right, let's check out my new video. Maybe YouTube will be the Kickstarter for my rise to fame. Remember to remove your makeup thoroughly, and the last step is subscribe to my channel to stay updated with the latest makeup trends. It's only been 10 hours, but look at this. There are over 200,000 views and 1,000 comments. Yay! Let's see. Like if you watch this just because you thought this was Olivia. When you're boring, but you have a famous sister. Olivia, you're the goat. Please reply to my comment. What on earth is going on here? No one talked about the video content. It's all about Olivia. Why can't I get rid of that name? I am Madison! Frustrated, I closed the laptop to leave, but turned around to see the mean girls surrounding me. Silly, you should have titled it Skincare Tips from Olivia's Sister. There would have been millions of views by now. Someone with no talent like you should just stay in the dark, please. Shut up! Just wait! One day y'all gonna become my fans too. Finally, what a long day! But isn't every beginning tough? Me quitting would be exactly what those mean girls wanted, so I can't give up now. I was struggling to set up my camera when mom opened the door and peeked in. You started a YouTube channel? Why not ask your sister to help promote it? Ah, uh, but no worry. Everyone can obviously see that you're Olivia's sister. You'll probably receive a gold button soon anyway. Ugh, what do you know? I don't even need her help. And please stop entering my room without knocking. Nobody acknowledges my effort just because I look like her. Fine then, just wait and see. In two more months, I'll be 18 and be able to do one thing I've been dreaming of. That will put an end to all this unfairness I had to suffer. This is it, the moment I've been waiting for. Right here, right now, I'll be reborn. I'm ready to start my life anew. You can open your eyes and look at yourself, Ms. Lewis. <sighs> okay, three, two, one. O-M-G in the mirror. A beautiful face, a stranger, not like Olivia's or anyone I ever know. Finally, I can live my life with my famous sister out of my way. Hmm, I wonder how my parents would react to this face that I myself don't even recognize. Hey, I'm home. Hello, but who are you? It's Madison, aren't you? What happened? Did you get plastic surgery? Plastic surgery? Didn't you say you were on vacation with your friends? Your beautiful face. Why did you? You mean Olivia's beautiful face. I'm done living in her shadow. Then I ran straight to my room, leaving them there all stunned. The next morning at school, all the girls' curious eyes were on me. And the boys? Needless to say, people were buzzing around. But there was no Olivia nor Madison to be heard. Nobody recognized me. I am the one and only now. Hey, Angel. Are you lost? Let me show you around. Since when did this mean girl become so friendly? You moving here is the right decision. Our school is the best in the state. Boring! If it weren't for my parents' new investment in this area, I wouldn't be at this shabby place. This fame-seeking silly girl instantly bought my bluffing. Her eyes widened, looking at me like a puppy. Then she did everything I asked her to. Buying me sodas, carrying my bag for me, and even wiping my seat. <laughs> Suddenly, Alicia walked over and nudged Zara. Where have you been? I told you to get me a latte. And who's she? Oh, this is my new bestie. And you should go get your latte yourself, as I'll be busy showing my friend here around, right? Alicia's frown face was a picture. <laughs> what a solid friendship these mean girls have. But the fun had only just begun. As the teacher did a roll call, I raised my hand up at the sound of Madison Lewis. The whole class gasped, and you betcha, Alicia and Zara's bewildered faces were hilarious. Didn't see that coming, huh? By recess, the whole school had heard the breaking news. Me, Madison, just got plastic surgery. Some were showering me with flattery, while some just kept judging the size of my eyes or my nose bridge, blah, blah, blah. But no one compared me to Olivia anymore. They just forgot about my famous twin sister. That's all I need. Madison is unique. Ouch! 
What's wrong with you? Are you blind? It was you going the wrong way, Madison. Um, he looks so familiar, but I still can't think of his name. He's... It's Dylan. Have you seriously forgotten my name already? That's right! My old neighbor Dylan! His family must have moved back to town again. But how could you recognize me right away? You look a bit different, but I can still tell from your voice. Forget the past. I'm the new Madison. The best version of Madison. Then I walked away from him. Now I'm finally free to do whatever I want without being compared to Olivia. I easily got that cheerleading captain title. From this spot, I can see all the impressed spectators and Zara's look of fury. <laughs> she was the former captain who got dethroned by me. Then I went on and won the school beauty contest too. Alicia's boyfriend, Sid, even dumped her to chase after me. Who's the loser now, girl? But of course, a jerk like him didn't interest me. So I bluntly rejected him in front of everyone. One afternoon while I was going home, Sid jumped out of nowhere and blocked my way. Babe, girls are lining up to date me, but I picked you. Be my girl and you'll see. Come on, just one dinner. Let go of me! Suddenly, a big-looking guy rushed in, scared Sid off, and then offered to take me home. He introduced himself as Isaac, and turns out we were in the same chemistry class. Oh god, how come I never noticed this handsome boy? Probably chemistry had sucked the life out of me every time I entered that lab room, but it's okay. We can rebuild our chemistry here now. After that day, we texted each other all of the time, and a week later, we became an item. Fast, yes, but when you know, you know. Isaac took care of me during workouts, waited in the salon for hours, and even kept me updated with fashion trends. He's just perfect. But one time, when we walked hand in hand at the mall, I caught sight of Dylan's cold face. I suddenly felt awkward and tried to avoid his gaze. Strange, but why bother? Isaac and I were too busy discussing our upcoming plans anyway. I finally released my second video, and no one mentioned Olivia, but Gigi, Bella, Lily Maymac? Now they're seeing me like those hot girls? Ridiculous! And talk kept coming about how I look like other stars. Maybe she brought their photos and asked the surgeon to copy them, but no way can Replica compete with the original. Still, isn't it better to resemble your own sibling than being some stranger's copycat? <laughs> so, did I really look like a carbon copy of someone else? Again? My rush to Isaac. He's the only one I can trust. Uh, just a little, babe. But if you don't like it, there's always a way. So I continued to undergo many other surgeries to find the perfect, unique Madison. Isaac was always there to encourage me. He was the one who suggested what part I should fix next. Sharper jawline, thinner nose, fuller lips. He has an eye for this, right? Seems like your eyes still need some fixing. I'll take you there next week. More? I know Isaac only wanted the best for me, but after pouring my fortune on endless plastic surgeries, I was completely broke, and no way would my parents agree to lend me some. Why not ask Isaac, you wonder? I can't do that. I'm not a gold digger. The surgery appointment was coming up, but I still couldn't gather enough money. What to do? What's wrong? Fighting with your guy? Desperate to offload, I blurted out my problem. So, could you help me out? I'll pay you back as soon as possible. I don't know why you think you need all this surgery. If Isaac really loved you, no way would he make you do this. Let me knock some sense into this dude. Dylan seemed so mad. I tried to pull his hand, but to no avail. Thank goodness someone blocked him. That's Olivia. I don't know what she said, but Dylan calmed down and went inside. Then Olivia walked towards me. You're already so pretty, Madison. Don't mind what others say. You guys don't know me at all. I'd rather be weirdly ugly than be pretty, but look the same as someone else. I don't want to be a copy of anyone. Then I stormed off immediately. Waking up after a restless night, I was reaching my phone to call Isaac, then saw an envelope of money on the nightstand. Is this from Olivia? Why did she... Never mind. No time to think, else I'm gonna be late for my appointment. Look, my face has healed just in time for my graduation ceremony. Pretty, huh? But I haven't been able to bring myself to be happy at all, as it's been over a month since Isaac ghosted me. After the eye surgery that day, Isaac insisted I have my nose fixed too. I said I needed more time to recover, but he got annoyed and just left. I've been looking forward to this graduation, which is compulsory for everyone, so he won't be able to avoid me anymore. My parents came too, but probably for Olivia, and today's spotlight is definitely hers. Suddenly, the crowd surrounding my sister gravitated to something else. Hang on, Isaac? Oh. My. God. Standing next to him is a girl who looks exactly like me! And her dress is identical to the one Isaac once gave me. 
I rushed over to confront him, but he flung me away. Wow, how buzzing. Both the real deal and the knockoff are here. Can you even tell them apart, Isaac? Stop saying nonsense. My princess is the one and only. Hey, you really do look a lot like me. Who are you? So after countless surgeries, I was still a doppelganger? All I want is just to be myself, to be unique. Why is it so hard? I felt rage filling up my body. I ran to the restroom to calm myself down, but it didn't help because I overheard the truth. Isaac and Naomi broke up when she moved abroad with her family. Guess she's back now. Yeah, how much he must love her to do all this. Great, now I get it. Isaac only wanted me to get plastic surgery to look like Naomi. But once his ex is back, he threw me away like a broken toy. So the gossip girls at school are definitely not missing out on this chance to mock me. Girls, stop! My sister, it's you who needs to stop. Don't you know you're the cause of everything? Calm down, Madison. It's completely normal to look like someone. To me, and to your family, you've always been the one and only Madison. No! I've never been seen as the only one! Then I told Dylan everything I'd bottled up inside, why I absolutely needed plastic surgery, why I was so obsessed with the fact that I resembled my sister. Everybody had always thought of me merely as Olivia's shadow. I never knew that's how you felt. I'm sorry, Madison. We are such bad parents. Startled, I turned around to see everyone. Madison, I've never looked down on you. I only thought I could use my reputation to make things easier for you. We always try to do the best we can for you two. We thought this change in appearance was what you wanted. If only we'd realized the painful reason behind it. Oh, wow. They actually cared this much about me? I cried even louder and ran straight into their open arms. Maybe Dylan was right. Maybe I really am special just for who I am, not for what I look like. The next day, I went to school to clear up my locker. High school is over. Now I can shake off all the bad memories I had here. Let's start things anew. Oh, finally found you. Um, Naomi, right? I, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to copy you. I didn't know. It's all right. I know it wasn't your fault. I swear, I had no idea Isaac was that much of a jerk. I immediately dumped him and exposed him online. How could he think us girls are just replaceable items? He even had the cheek to cry and beg me. But men like him don't ever deserve to be near us. I thought you'd be angry with me. For what? Madison, I'm truly sorry for what you had to go through. But everything has a bright side to it, don't you think? What do you think about having another twin sister? My dream of becoming a star on a runway has finally come true. But the most amazing thing was finding a companion with the same passion as me, who's none other than my new identical twin, Naomi. Bet no one can tell us apart. Miss Madison Lewis, would you go on a date with me after this? Oh, but I'm Naomi. Don't ever think you can fool me, Madison. You've always been different in my eyes. I'm Donna, an influencer extraordinaire and soon-to-be supermodel. My family are my biggest supporters. Look, there's my sister Charlotte. Even though my parents are busy running the family corporation, they buy me whatever I want. This includes this spectacular dress for the upcoming Elite Model Look Contest. Girls, get ready! We're eating out tonight! Yay! Charlotte just helped Dad secure another business contract, so it's time to celebrate! At the restaurant, Mom, Dad, and Charlotte walked ahead while I showed my 329,587 followers around. My fans even commented that I should compete for Miss USA. Suddenly, someone bumped into me, causing me to drop my phone. Oh no, my live stream's ended, and it's all his fault. Idiot, you ruined my live stream. Now my fans will think I'm rude and unfollow me. Are you walking with your eyes closed? Sorry, I didn't mean to. Let me make it up for you. Donna the Fabulous? Okay, you just got one more follower. What a jinx. He better stay out of my sight. But as soon as I reached our table, I saw his face again. Why is he here? Donna, this is Matthew, our new finance director. Oh, how important. But not as much as live streaming, right? Who does he think he is? Charlotte even <laughs> laughed at his stupid joke. Speaking of which, Donna, you're going to study business from now on. Time to stop those modeling, live streaming things. What? But why? You've always supported my dreams before. But Dad just ignored me and chatted with Matthew. 
Dad was being so unreasonable. Everything was fine until that Matthew guy showed up. Charlotte comforted me and suggested we attend business classes for me while I prepared for the modeling contest. What a brilliant idea! Oh, I love my amazing quick-witted sister! I then put all of my focus into practicing for the contest, but Matthew kept on disturbing me with his nonsense. He even sent me a picture of wedding rings saying, Are these okay? Think they'll match us? I frantically called him to ask him what all the gibberish was about. Hasn't your dad told you yet? We're getting engaged and taking charge of the company together. What on earth is this guy saying? Since when was I expected to marry some guy I barely knew and take over a business I had no interest in? Dad should have some explanation for this. Upon arriving home, I confronted Dad, but he just sighed and said he was planning on telling me himself. But you can't just dictate my career and who I marry. Donna, I only want the best for you. But Dad, Donna didn't even attend her business classes and is still indulging in her nonsense fashion club. How can you expect her to handle the company? Oh no, why is she telling him that? Was she trying to help me? She's right, Dad. I have no interest in business at all. I can't. If that's the case, then you can start as vice president and get some hands-on experience. And you, Charlotte, you'll be Donna's personal assistant and support her. No! This is not how you want it to turn out. Dad used to love us both, but now he didn't even listen. Ugh, yes, Charlotte, my savior. She would surely know what to do. I can't believe it. I've tried so hard to prove myself, only to have everything given to a simple-minded fool like you. S simple minded That's what you really think of me? Well, I guess I just gotta take my new position to show her how simple-minded I am then. So the next morning, I dolled up and strutted to the company lobby under a different name, Miss Vice President. Ha! Huh, look at those gawking eyes wishing they could escape from the boring suits. Matthew was there too, and... Was he <laughs> laughing? Suddenly, my heel got tangled up in my dress and I tripped over. What a disaster. Matthew offered me his hand and asked if I was okay. Who needs his help? And all the silly chatters? Just wait and see. And by that, I mean now. Matthew introduced me to the company's core members and announced some new strategic goals for the company. ROI, margin, accounts. Jeez, what kind of language is he speaking? After what seemed like an eternity, he asked if anyone wanted to add anything. Aha! I, of course, couldn't miss a chance to show my leadership. This office is seriously lacking some colors. Violet blinds would be a good start, and some motivational pictures really help boost productivity. Oh, you mean putting up motivational quotes? Oh, please, no. Motivation comes from the all-time fashion greats. You know, Bella Hadid, Tyra Banks, Kendall Jenner. Everyone gawped at me while Charlotte furiously signaled me to stop. Everyone here is so boring. Ugh, all right, I'll stop then. My first day was then followed by tedious meetings and schedules. Everyone was talking gibberish and making me sign a bunch of papers. But every cloud has a silver lining. And for a foodie like me, that's dinner meetings. These people really know how to enjoy life, don't they? But before I could even have my first bite, they all started asking me about proposal this and project that. Fortunately, Matthew was there to save the day. Honestly, he seems pretty good at his job and he's quite attractive when focused. Oh yeah, work. I gotta contribute my own talents at work too. So the next day I put the sign on my door, then sat back and watched my favorite fashion show. Ooh, look at those dazzling dresses. One day, I'd be walking the runway in a gown like that, not sitting here surrounded by confusing numbers and papers. Later, when I opened the door, an endless line of people was already waiting for me. Jeez, can't this company with all these brilliant brains function without me? Right then, Charlotte came dragging me away. What happened? Oh gosh, I didn't know that my computer was connected to the meeting room's projector, so everyone had been watching Project Runaway with me. Matthew was in the conference room too. Why didn't he fix it? Okay, everyone. We should thank our cute boss for giving us a lot of ideas for our problems. He finished the meeting and let them out, but Charlotte was still standing there fuming at me. Cute? There is nothing cute about it. Don't get any wrong ideas that he likes you. Wait for me, Maddie. What is with that attitude? Oh, right. I've seen the gooey-eyed look she gives Matthew. Does she have feelings for him? Before I could pry further, I was sent to Millen for another stupid meeting. Feeling bored, I watched a fashion show to kill time when someone startled me from my side. I personally think this collection is overrated. Oh, sorry if I scared you. I'm Brian. He then gave me his business card and, wow, 
He's the CEO of a modeling firm in France. Are you coming to the fashion week too? I wish. I actually came for work. <sighs> oh, what a pity. There's a modeling contest this week. I can tell a true beauty like you is destined for the crown. I missed so many chances to be on the runway. If I make it this time, maybe mom and dad will see how serious I am about modeling. This is too amazing of an offer to refuse. Brian, I'm coming with you. At the show, I made sure my phone was off so I could truly immerse myself in all the glamor of the newest fall collection. Brian then kept his word and took me to the audition. I was super nervous at first, but unexpectedly, everyone else looked so amateur. Meanwhile, I strutted like a pro, confident that this time I would get an offer. But for now, reality was calling. <sighs> As soon as I turned on my phone, a zillion missed calls from Dad and Matthew popped up. This screamed trouble, so I quickly got Brian's contacts and returned home. There, Charlotte went all banshee shrieking mode on me, accusing me of being irresponsible and selfish for skipping the important meeting. Dad, if you don't do something about this, Donna will destroy the company you've worked so hard to build. That's right. But instead of yelling at her, you should have been there to help out. I'm so disappointed in you, Charlotte. Oh God, Charlotte's face turned pale immediately. Dad should be scolding me, not her. Feeling a little bad for Charlotte, the next day I went to talk to her, but it sounded like she was arguing with someone inside. I walked in to see Matthew sitting there with loads of pictures of Brian and me. We're still, in Charlotte's words, it looked like we were dating. A few photos can't change the fact that we're getting engaged. He then grabbed my hand and pulled me outside, leaving a stunned Charlotte behind. How are you so sure that I'm not seeing someone else? It's just a feeling, or maybe it's just my hope because I... What did he mean by hope? And holy shrimp, why is my heart beating so crazy? What a day. I thought it was finally over when dad slammed the pictures of me and Brian down in front of me. He was so mad at me, he decided our engagement would be tomorrow instead of a month, as planned. But I haven't mentally prepared for this. So here I am, at my engagement ceremony, waiting for my fiancé to arrive. <laughs> just kidding. Actually, Brian called me last minute to tell me the best news ever. A fashion brand had chosen me as their ambassador. I needed to fly over for some paperwork. Thanks to him, I successfully escaped the engagement and flew to Milan to meet up with him. Finally, I got to pursue my long repressed dream in my favorite city and not pay heed to my dad's ridiculous orders. Yay! As I woke up the next morning, I eagerly reached for my phone to call Brian, but huh? Where was it? I looked at the nightstand, but my passport, my wallet, and all of my stuff had disappeared. I dashed to the reception asking for Brian's room, but they all shook their heads saying there was no one by that name staying there. Frantic, I used their computer and checked the website for his phone number but it kept saying error. Then I look up any information about the contest, but found Zilch. How could he do this to me? I trusted him. Now I'm in a foreign country, all alone, and with no money. What am I gonna do? I can't just call dad to come get me, and neither can I call Charlotte. There's only one person I could contact right now. So I called Matthew, and he flew over immediately. We were walking along the Navili Canal to get some dinner before heading back. I thought he would be furious right now because I ran away from our engagement, but he was just quiet the whole time. So, is it okay for you to suddenly come here? I mean, work and stuff, you know? It's alright, you come first, everything else comes after. That's sweet of him, but I needed to make sure he didn't get the wrong message. I called for your help, but that doesn't mean I want to get engaged. I'm, I'm not ready to commit. At first, I wanted this marriage to happen, but now I'm not so sure anymore. Oh my. Did me running away from the engagement upset him that much? As we stepped through the door, I saw mom, dad, and Charlotte waiting for us. Charlotte instantly bombarded me with her dolphin frequency yelling, seeing how much they worried about me, how irresponsible and terrible I was. You should have won an Oscar for your acting, Charlotte. Unfortunately, your partner played you this time. Acting? And what partner? Turns out Charlotte was the one behind all of this. She hired Brian from the beginning to make me look bad in my parents' eyes. She also made sure my engagement with Matthew didn't go as planned. Everything played out just as she'd wanted, but she didn't think Brian's greed would get the best of him. He called Matthew, saying he was holding me for ransom. And during the call, the idiot fraud accidentally brought up Charlotte. We were all too shook to even speak when Charlotte burst out crying. You're right, it was me all along. She's never done anything useful, yet got everything meant for me. Mom, Dad, if you needed someone to take care of the company and marry Maddie, why her? Why not me? 
you haven't told them anything this whole time? I was still processing everything when my dad sighed and said, I was going to tell you both when the time felt right, but seeing you pitting against each other like this hurts me so much. Actually, Donna, we're not your biological parents. Turns out, dad was my parents' private lawyer and the company belonged to my real parents, not to dad. But then, my parents got into a terrible accident, and during their last minutes, they gave the company, and me, over to him. They asked Dad to raise me properly and arrange for me to marry Matthew as a part of their deal with Matthew's parents. Growing up and seeing me so passionate about modeling, Dad was gonna let Charlotte run the company and let me live my life how I wanted to. But then Matthew and his family showed up and insisted we get engaged according to the deal. Dad had no choice but to respect them and carry out my parents' will. So, my current beloved mom and dad, are not my actual family. We're still. My biological parents had both passed away. Donna, we hope you understand. Though we're not related, we have always loved you as our daughter. This is very hard for us too. I looked at mom and dad, the ones who had always loved and cared for me. Mom, dad, just like you two. I'm sure my parents would want me to do what makes me happy. Though I am the lawful heiress of the company, I can only do harm to it. So, I hope you understand, and let Charlotte take over it. She's a better suit than me. That's right. You cannot force someone into doing something they don't like. Neither can you force someone into love. Woohoo! No more boring office job. Instead, I've put all my energy into elite model look. And here I am today. You've got this, Donna. I confidently strutted down the runway with Mom, Dad, and Charlotte cheering from the audience. And when I finished my part, I joined my family and nervously waited for the MC to announce the chosen ones. Samantha Friske, Amelia Davis, and Donna Rossi! Yes! I've made it! I've been waiting for this day for so long! Suddenly, I spotted Matthew coming towards us. Congratulations, Donna. I knew you'd get it. Thank you for coming. I know love cannot be forced, nor should I rush it, but whenever you're ready. Donna, will you go out with me? How about... Now! I'd just climbed back into the room when suddenly I heard a voice. Jasmine, how come you're only getting home now? I turned around to find Emma standing there. That's my business. Don't come home late like this again, okay? You'll be grounded if your dad finds out. I shrugged and closed my door without saying anything. Yep, that's Emma, my stepmom. She doesn't actually care, she just pretends to. If it wasn't for her telling my dad to forbid me from singing, then I wouldn't have to sneak out to go practice like this. Different day, same story. Yet again, I've had to lie about going to my singing practice. Honestly, I can't wait to be an adult so I can do whatever I want. Dad, I'm going over to Mix to study, I said as I headed for the door. Suddenly, Emma pulled me back and handed me a bottle. Huh? Licorice tea? Drink this after practicing. It helps keep your voice clear. Then she winked at me. Huh? So she knew I'd lied about where I was going, yet still she'd helped me? Maybe, just maybe. I've been misunderstanding her this whole time. Later that night, Emma suggested we should go for a picnic on the weekend. And for once, I excitedly agreed. But when the weekend rolled around, there was this hectic snowstorm. Ugh. Emma kept looking out at the snow with disappointment written across her face. Ugh. That's when the idea hit me. How about we have an indoor picnic? Yes, that's right. That's a great idea. And so we set up the tent right in our living room and we were having the best time when suddenly the doorbell rang. I got up to answer it, and standing there, covered in snow, was a woman. She suddenly ran at me and said, Oh my gosh, Jasmine, you've grown up so fast! I've missed you so much! Before I could understand what was going on, Dad shouted, Megan, I can't believe you have the nerve to show up here like this! I know you won't accept my apology, but you don't understand. I had to see her. I've missed her every single day. Oh my god. So, that woman was my mother? I couldn't hold back my tears and ran straight over to hug her. I swear I had been waiting for this moment for years. Mom gently stroked my hair and then turned to my dad. Can I stay here for a while? 
just to make it up to my beloved daughter after such a long time being apart, Elvis. Are you joking? Get out of my house. Dad, please let her stay. Please. But no matter how much I begged, Dad wouldn't give in. And so I turned to Emma for help. Elvis, just let her stay here. If Jasmine wants to be with her mom this badly, we should let them have some time together. Come on, darling. I looked at Emma with so much appreciation, then turned those puppy eyes towards my dad, and eventually he reluctantly nodded his head. Yay! I shouted and led mom to my room. From that day onwards, I spent most of my free time with her. We went to the movies together, shopping together, and honestly, it was the happiest I'd ever felt. One day, I was listening and humming along to my music when mom came in. Wow. So, you also love singing? It must be genetic. Back then, if I hadn't been so passionately obsessed with music, which drove your dad crazy, I might never have left you like that. Now, I regret it so much, Jasmine. I put my arms around her and softly said, After all these years, I still think about that lullaby. Can you sing it to me? Which one? I sang you many lullabies back then. It's... Don't Know Why by Nora Jones. Oh, right. That one. Then she started singing. I swear to God, her voice was like an angel. But strangely, it didn't give me any of the feelings I had as a kid. Was it because I have grown up? While I was absorbed in my thoughts, I suddenly saw Emma's shadow at my doorway. But when she met my eyes, she hurried down the stairs. Huh? Why was Emma crying? I was so confused. She must be jealous of our relationship, Mom said. Yeah, probably, since she'd been married to my dad for three years, but we'd never been close. That evening, when I went to the kitchen with Mom to set the table, she suddenly shouted, Oh my gosh! Why did Emma make chicken parmigiana? Doesn't she know that your dad hates this? Then she took the plate and threw it in the trash, saying she would order takeaway instead. Huh? Dad hates this? He always complimented Emma on her signature dish. Before I could react, Emma entered the room. As soon as she saw her chicken in the trash, she glared at Mom. Things then got so awkward. Emma had skipped dinner. Mom also tried to start a conversation with Dad a few times, but he ignored her. Ugh, I felt so bad for Mom. In my Dad's eyes, there was only Emma now. But my mother had done nothing wrong. She just wanted to pursue her passion. Later that night, I was heading to the pantry to get some snacks when I heard Emma yelling at Mom. Megan, for old time's sake, I didn't bring up anything from the past, but you can't just do whatever you want. How dare Emma yell at my mom like that? As soon as Emma left, I ran over to my mom asking her what had happened. She hesitated for a while, then told me the whole story. It turned out Mom and Emma used to be in the same band when they were young. And since mom was always the lead singer, Emma had begrudged her ever since. Perhaps she has never gotten over it. Ugh, I didn't expect Emma to be so mean. So from that day on, I began to show my attitude towards Emma. I didn't let her go to the parent-teacher conference like I had promised before. And I even forbade Mick, my best friend, from talking to her every time he came over. Mom, how did you and dad meet back in the day? Well... Back then, your dad was a waiter at the lounge I used to sing at every weekend. We quickly fell in love and started leaving love letters for each other at our secret spot. Ew, how cheesy. It's called romantic, you silly. At that time, we put our initials at the end of every letter. Suddenly, there was some noise at the door, and I turned to see dad standing right behind us. What do you mean, our initials? It represented our two favorite characters' names from that movie. Yes. It was the initials of Monica and Quincy in the movie Love and Basketball. Dad gaped at Emma in surprise as she continued. I was the one writing letters to you that year. But when I got to the meeting spot, I saw you and Megan together. So I left. Dad and Emma looked at each other, then turned to stare at Mom. Actually, back then I liked you so much that I pretended to be Emma. But it's not that important. In the end, you were still into me and we got along really well, right? I can't believe you lied to me like this for all these years. Then dad angrily left the room followed by Emma. As for mom, she was sitting there, tears pouring from her eyes. Okay, so mom was definitely in the wrong. But did dad need to treat her like that? 
Who doesn't make mistakes from time to time? And anyway, it's because of my mom's mistake that I'm even here, right? From that day onwards, the atmosphere in the house was so intense. Dad ignored mom, and Emma always gave mom hateful looks. Until one day. I'd just gotten home from school when I saw my dad excitedly running towards me saying, Emma is pregnant. You're going to have a little brother or sister. Wow. I'd always wanted to have a sibling. I couldn't believe it. So that night, my family threw a party to celebrate, and mom also congratulated dad and Emma. And thanks to that, the tension between the three of them started to ease. Phew. But a few days later, for some reason, dad found out that I'd lied about going studying with Mick. He was furious and grounded me for a week. I was sullenly playing on my iPad when mom entered the room. Emma must be the snitch. Now that she's pregnant, she wants dad to be angry with you, so he'll give all his love to her and the baby. Well, that just made sense. The other day, I'd even seen Emma whispering something to dad, and as soon as he heard it, he got mad. Ugh, such a two-faced woman. I had to sort this out, and so I set up a fun plan for my stepmom. One time, I made her orange juice using powdered cheese, and she ended up spitting it out all over dad. <laughs> then I unscrewed the shower head to add blue food coloring, and that's how I gave her a Smurf makeover. It was hilarious hearing her horrid scream from the bathroom. Another time, I snuck into Emma's room, trying to put flour in her hair dryer. I was rummaging through the bedside table looking for her hair dryer when suddenly I saw a DVD labeled Jasmine 0311. Huh? What's this? Why was my name on it? Curious, I went back to my room to play it. And then I couldn't believe my eyes. On the screen, Emma was carrying a baby and singing a lullaby to her. This melody. Wasn't it the song Don't Know Why? So that baby was me? But Emma couldn't sing. Could she? Her voice was weak and sounded hoarse. What did this mean? I rushed to show my dad the DVD. Emma told me not to talk about this, but since you already know, I won't hide it anymore. Then he told me everything. Turns out my mom left for a rich man when I was only two years old, and it was Emma who came and helped my dad take care of me during my younger years. Oh my gosh. What? So all those memories of my mom's warm hugs and lullabies were all actually of Emma? A feeling of guilt welled up in my heart. I had to do something to apologize to Emma. So the next day, I asked Mick to go to the mall to help me buy her a gift. As I was passing a coffee shop, I suddenly saw my mom sitting with some guy. Without thinking much, I quickly pulled Mick to a nearby table and eavesdropped on them. Honey, how's the money? You know how pushy the creditors are, and they're getting kinda aggressive. Don't worry, it won't be long now. My daughter's on my side. She'll help me kick her stupid stepmom out. Then my ex-husband will soon follow her wish and volunteer to give me money. What? What was going on? Had mom come back just for dad's money? I was about to go confront her when my phone rang. It was dad. Jasmine, go to the hospital right away. Emma is in the emergency room. By the time I got there, I saw my dad sitting outside the ER with his head in his hands. After a while, the doctor came out and said, Both mother and baby are okay. Next time, please pay more attention to the patient's food allergy. How could you eat stuff you're allergic to? You must be more careful, okay? Yeah, Emma always took good care. It didn't make sense. Unless... my mom... I was about to tell dad about what I'd seen at the mall when mom suddenly appeared, eagerly asking about Emma's situation. Unable to stand her pretense any longer, I shouted, Mom, drop the act. It was you who did all of this, wasn't it? Jasmine, what nonsense are you uttering? Furious, I immediately told them the whole story I've heard. Megan, I could forgive you for the old letter story and for trying to sabotage my voice. But the fact that you wanted to harm my baby is unforgivable. It turns out the stuff from the past that she mentioned before was that my mom harmed her to destroy her voice. So that's why dad didn't let me sing, for fear that it would cause Emma pain. Suddenly mom burst out laughing. <laughs> I don't need your pity. You were so lucky to have such a beautiful voice and a wonderful man by your side. And even now, you're still trying to take the life that should have been mine. Megan, give it up already. 
You need to stop this. Mom was about to say something, but I interrupted her. Mom, please just go. I'm so ashamed to have a mother like you. Then I burst into tears. She got up and left, without even so much as a glance back at us. Emma took me into her arms. I was afraid that you would be disappointed. That's why I hid everything from you. I'm sorry for treating you so badly. She gently patted my head, and I felt like I was back in my childhood, where she'd held me and sang lullabies. It was so comforting. Finally, peace has returned to my family. I'm so fortunate to have Emma as a stepmom. And pretty soon, my little bro or sis will be here. And I can't wait. She's so pretty, just like a real-life Barbie. I wish my hair was as shiny and blonde as hers. This is what people think of me. But all I ever wanted was just to be a normal teenage girl, like everyone else. You see, ever since I was little, I stood out with my platinum blonde hair and turquoise eyes. People have always said I look like a Barbie. Hey, some of them even call me Barbie. My mom's always been super proud of my looks. She used to put me in princess dresses and sign me up for kids' talent shows, which I more often than not won. This led to media attention, and soon, I was invited to model for some big brands. Back then, I was super excited about this. I loved all the praise and pampering, but unexpectedly, it was that early fame that made me gradually lose my freedom. Nora, go get dressed. Quickly, I'm not showing up late for Anna's party. Yes, mom, I replied as I reluctantly grabbed the clothes my mom had laid out on my bed. Nora, your natural hair is so beautiful. Before I even had a chance to reply, mom was in there bragging about my natural blonde hair. Natural? Yeah, right. So it has nothing to do with the fact mom makes me bleach it once a month? <laughs> she made a huge deal a few months ago when she noticed my hair beginning to slightly darken. Then mom dragged me from person to person, boasting to them about my achievements. Ugh! This was so tedious. So, when she was absorbed in convo with some guy, I sneaked over to the food table and grabbed a slice of cake. I was about to put it in my mouth when suddenly, from behind, my mother's stern voice resounded. Nora! Put that down this instance! Huh? It's just a small piece of cake. I was hardly going to balloon up after eating it. Then without giving me time to argue, she snatched it out of my hand and said, Eat that, and you'll have to skip dinner and do cardio for one hour to burn all those calories off. Do you still want it? Jeez, there's no point arguing with mom. So I grabbed my drink and went to the corner of the room. I was fiddling with my glass and feeling totally fed up when suddenly a guy came up to me and almost caused me to spill my drink. Oh my god, it's Philip, the hottest teen model in the scene right now. Sorry, um, are you Nora? I've heard a lot about you, but why are you standing here all alone? Ah, it's because I'm not really into parties like this. So we're the same. Then we started chatting, and before Philip left, he asked for my number... After that, he texted me every evening. Talking to him was so much fun. He was just so sweet and thoughtful, and he always sent me the funniest memes. How cute! One day, while we were chatting, he texted me, Can I invite you to dinner? Let's say, tomorrow evening? Ah, oh, was he asking me out on a date? Yay! But I had to ask Mom's permission first. Ugh. Mom? Do you remember Philip, who we met at Anna's birthday party? Can I go to dinner with him tomorrow? Sure, I'll, I'll drive you there. No need, Mom. Philip will pick me up. No, I said I'll take you. No matter what I said, Mom still insisted. And if I didn't follow, she wouldn't let me go. Jeez. This was a date not a fashion show that required a manager. The next evening, as soon as I walked down the stairs, my mom was at it again. Oh my, what are you wearing? Before I had a chance to reply, mom pulled me into my room, took out a bodycon dress, and said, 
You put so much effort into looking this way, so you may as well flaunt it. Besides, dating this boy could bring business deals for us. Gosh, I get it now. All this was just about fame and money. There Philip was. I quickly fixed my hair, then I confidently walked towards him. But when I had just sat down, before I could even greet him, out of nowhere my mother appeared and asked the waiter to arrange another chair for her. Philip gave me this bewildered look, but I didn't know what was going on either. Mom, what are you doing? We've always been together. You don't mind if I sit here, do you? Uh, uh no, not at all. <laughs> Philip smiled awkwardly. Ugh, this was so embarrassing. When the waiter appeared with the menus, I was actually glad of the distraction. But, oh no, I didn't even have the chance to open the menu, but Mom had already finished ordering for us both. Grilled salmon with salad and no dressing. Ugh, how boring. Oh, but it gets worse. During dinner, my mom kept asking Philip questions like, What do your parents do? Oh, they only run a small business. I thought they were the presidents of a corporation or something. It's unbearable. Stop it. It's none of your business. I was just asking. A flustered-looking Philip made up some excuse about having to do something. Then he left. That's it. Thanks to my mom, my first date completely failed. Frustrated, I left right after he did. I didn't say a word to mom for the whole journey home. Things didn't end there, though. When we arrived home, she kept nagging about how I shouldn't hang out with Philip as he wouldn't be of any use to my career. Don't you think you're being too much? I can date whoever I want to. You know what? I don't want you to be my manager anymore, and I'll be moving out on my own. Then I rushed back to my room and started packing. Honey, I was just worried about you. I'm sorry, she said and hugged me while sobbing. Please, don't leave me like your dad did. I can't live without you. Hearing that, my heart fell. She was right. Ever since Dad left, there was only her taking care of and loving me. She's a bit tough and over-controlling, yet she meant well, right? I texted Philip a few times to apologize, but he didn't reply. Nora, look straight. Nora, where has your charisma gone? Let's take a short break. What's going on? You seem distracted today. I sighed and started telling Eleanor about my date with Philip. Gosh, your mom's a total control freak. You need to be strong and stand up against her to win your freedom. Well, of course I wanted freedom, but where should I start? Suddenly my phone beeped and stopped my train of thoughts. It was mom. Honey, Anna's sick, so I'm staying at hers tonight. Dinner's in the fridge, and don't forget to go on the treadmill an hour before bed. Love you. Yay! Tonight I'd be free and do whatever I want, so suddenly I came up with a brilliant idea. Yes, I was going to have a slumber party. Eleanor suggested we should order pizzas, and of course everyone excitedly agreed. So good. Suddenly the door opened. My eyes widened in horror when I saw that it was my mom, and oh boy, she looked furious. Nora, what on earth are you doing? And you can guess the rest. She made all my friends leave, and worse, she forced me to wake up at 5 a.m. to work out. All this just because of a bite of pizza. Eleanor was right. I needed to put a stop to this by finally standing up to her. This is unbearable. So, as a stress reliever the next day, I decided to do something I always wanted. Wow, it's so cute. I know, right? It feels good to do what I want for a change. Nora? Why are you here? How come you didn't answer any of my calls? Startled, I turned around to see my mother standing there glaring at me. I quickly covered the tattoo on my wrist with my other hand, but it was too late. Nora, how dare you get a tattoo without my permission? Get back in there and get it removed right away. No, mom. My body, my choice. From now on, I'll make decisions about my own life. Everyone on the street stopped to look at us. Seeing that, Mom just glared at Eleanor, then dragged me over to the car. But how did she know I was at the tattoo studio? 
Right at that moment, my phone buzzed with an unknown AirTag device nearby. Wait, could it be? I quickly checked my stuff and oh my god, it's true. Mom had stuck an air tag into a hidden corner of my bag. Why did you attach an air tag to my bag? So I'm aware when you do stupid things like tarnishing your body with some awful tattoo. As soon as possible, you're getting it removed. I'm 18. I can do what I want. Eleanor was right. You just want to turn me into a puppet to control. I knew it. Nora, I forbid you to hang out with that girl ever again. She's jealous of you and wants to ruin your career. She just wanted to help me. Your behavior isn't acceptable. And she pulled me into my room and locked the door. You can stay there until you see sense. I banged on the door and shouted till my voice was hoarse, but it was no use. Three days passed. Mom still brought me food, but she refused to let me out. Oh no. Did she want to keep me here forever? I hurriedly called Eleanor for help, but it didn't work. Why didn't she answer the phone? Then suddenly I saw an article reporting that a model had spoken up about how Eleanor had been tricking her to steal her vedette spot for a famous designer's upcoming show? And that model was... Me? Impossible. That did not happen at all. And I have not been in contact with the press. Then a thought crossed my mind. Mom? That's right. As my manager, she must have said this to the media to defame Eleanor. Meanwhile, Eleanor must think it was me who did all this. Ugh, no wonder she was ignoring my calls. Angry and disappointed with mom's behavior, I decided to confide in my Twitter. Unexpectedly, after only 20 minutes, my post was shared quickly and the hashtag RescueNora was at the top of the search. But then my mom angrily came in and confiscated my phone. Don't expect someone to come here and save you. The next morning, I was awoken by loud noises from outside. Huh? What was going on? I went to the window and saw a crowd of people holding signs, saying free Nora and let Barbie out. But wait a minute. I spotted some familiar faces. Eleanor and Philip. They were holding a big sign saying we want to see Nora. Finally, under the pressure of the crowd, mom was forced to release me. Honestly, I was grateful to the people who supported me, especially Eleanor and Philip. Thanks to them, I dare to finally break my mom's unreasonable control and grip and be myself. So, I decided to move into my own place. As for my mom, I want to forgive her, but it's hard. I just hope she realizes what she did was wrong. Then we can try to rebuild our relationship. Oh, and one more thing. From now on, I won't bleach my hair. Just to get doll hair like before. I decided to keep my natural hair color. It may affect my modeling career, but so what? It's my natural hair, and I like it. Anyway, as you can see, life's good, as I have my BFF Eleanor and my boyfriend Philip by my side. Finally, after an 11-hour flight, I arrived at LAX, Los Angeles International Airport. It's awesome! I can't wait to see my mom. You see, my dad's French and my mom's American. We used to all live together in France, But then they split up and mom moved back here. Of course, I've talked to her on FaceTime and stuff, but this will be the first time I've properly seen her in five years. I haven't visited before because mom's a super successful businesswoman and she works really hard. That meant she wouldn't have the time to provide me with the attention I needed. But now that I'm 16 and I can look after myself, I'm finally able to visit. So thanks to my dad and stepmom for my plane ticket birthday present, I'm now in sunny LA for a whole month. Not only do I get to spend time with mom, but I also get to chill out in her enormous villa. (sighs) Ah, bliss. But first, let's get all my luggage, then find a taxi to my mom's. Yeah, unfortunately, she couldn't come to pick me up since she had some work to do. But no problem, I can handle this myself. Okay, maybe I spoke too soon. It's been half an hour and my luggage was nowhere to be seen. Then, this handsome guy approached me and said, Hey, looks like your luggage has gone AWOL. Do you need any help? Cute and helpful. Hmm, 
I could totally get used to U.S. guys. I showed him my ticket, and turns out, I was waiting at the wrong carousel. Oops. After guiding me to the correct one, this guy, whose name I found out was Zach, even pulled my luggage down for me. But one of my cases got stuck and burst open, causing everything to tumble out. Girl, it's not your lucky day, is it? He burst out laughing. Oh well, at least it wasn't all bad. I mean, a cute guy had rescued me, right? He helped me pick up my things, then he offered to drive me to my mom's house. After some 30 minutes, he began to slow down. I looked out the window and, oh my god, this is the chicest villa ever. The pool, the tennis court, the palm trees. It was exactly like a movie star home. I was gawping at the villa when suddenly I heard a car engine sound. Startled, I turned around to see Zack zooming away. My suitcases! I yelled. Ugh, my laptop and iPad were in there too. Oh God, why is this happening to me? And on my very first day in the US? At least I still had my phone and passport with me. Phew. So I called my mom. Needless to say, I was a distraught mess when she arrived. Who'd have thought that such a kind-looking guy would turn out to be a thief? Anyways, my mom could buy me new clothes and things, and I could still have an amazing time in her villa, right? Mom led me to my room and told me to get some rest. After that disaster, I was dead exhausted, so I quickly fell asleep on the comfiest bed ever. When I awoke, it was dark outside. I realized I hadn't eaten anything since the flight, so I went downstairs and checked the fridge and cupboards. Huh? They were all empty. I was still digging around in the kitchen when my mom returned with some burgers. Sweetie, I only got back from my business trip yesterday, so I haven't had time to go to the grocery store. Let's just eat fast food today, okay? I didn't mind, as it was awesome to have dinner with my mom again after such a long time. I took a look around the room. There was barely any furniture here. My mom said that's minimalism. A trendy lifestyle in L.A. nowadays. Less is more. How cool is that? The next morning we went out, but what's with that old rusty car? Seeing my confused look, she quickly explained that this was only temporary as her car was being serviced. But then Mum couldn't get the garage door to open. Turns out, normally she had her own chauffeur. But since I've traveled thousands of miles to visit her, she wanted to drive herself. Huh? How sweet. In the following days, my mom and I enjoyed ourselves in LA. Sunbathing by the pool, spa days, shopping. This is definitely the best vacation of my life. At least until that morning, I was awoken by a loud quarrel. Looking down from the stairs, I saw mom in the living room with a strange woman. She was pointing at the couch. Jeez, that's where I spilled soy sauce yesterday while eating sushi. Then mom appeared and sounded flustered. She told me to quickly pack my things as we were leaving. Um, mom, is there something wrong? Oh, nothing, sweetie. It's just that the couch is dirty, so let's just get someone in to clean the entire villa. Wow, mom would deep clean the whole house just because of a soy sauce stain? How rich is she? So, where will we stay this time? A luxurious five-star hotel? Or a magnificent mansion in Beverly Hills? <sighs> but then the car came to a stop in front of some shabby apartment building. Huh? This couldn't be right. Mom told me this was her friend's spare apartment, so we would stay here a few days for convenience. Elena, it's probably best if you stay away from the people in this area. They don't have the same lifestyle as us. You know what I mean. Ugh. Yeah. This place was the opposite of the villa. Cramped room, hard bed, and the bathroom didn't even have a bathtub. Since moving here, mom didn't take me out anymore. In the evenings, she dressed up all elegantly and went out to her fancy work meetings. On one such evening, I was sitting alone watching YouTube, munching on french fries for the fifth time this week, when there was a knock on the door. I opened it, and standing there was a scruffy guy, claiming to be Frankie, the landlord's son. I told him there must be a mistake, as we were only here for a few days. Then I went to close the door, but he blocked it with his foot. 
Miss Anita has rented this apartment for two years. What do you mean a few days? I just saw her take a cab at the front door. Don't lie to me. No, my mom is a successful businesswoman who has a villa in Brentwood Park. Then you must have mistaken your mom for someone else. In short, remind your businesswoman mom to pay the rent. Then he sneered and walked away. How dare he say that? And why did I keep on running into jerks? Ugh! When mom returned, I told her what had happened. I thought she'd find it funny or something, but nope. Instead, she got really mad. You shouldn't have opened the door to him. I told you not to socialize with the people here. Okay, hearing made-up lies about yourself like that must suck, but did she have to be so furious about it? The next morning, I was drinking tea on the balcony when suddenly I saw a familiar face passing by down the street. My god, it was the jerk from the airport. Zack! That thief! I shouted, rushing down, but when I got there, he disappeared. I was still exasperated when a voice came from behind. What on earth are you doing screaming this early in the morning? I turned around to see Frankie leaning against the wall with his arms folded. None of your business, swindler. Huh? Swindler? What do you mean? Quit lying. I already told my mom all about you trying to con money out of me. Hmm. Is that so? So, you think I'm the liar? Before I could answer that provoking question, I heard my mom's voice calling down from the balcony. Hey, rich girl, if you want a reality check, I suggest you come meet me tonight, and we'll go follow your mom. Mom appeared and, frowning, asked me why I was talking to Frankie. I blurted out something about asking for directions, then quickly entered the room and closed the door. Frankie was clearly a thieving, lying jerk, right? But then, why were his words lingering in my mind? I had noticed a few strange things, such as when we were at the villa, I asked mom where the cutlery was, but she couldn't remember. But then in this apartment, she immediately got it. Plus, why was there a photo of her in the bedroom when this was her friend's place? That night, when mom was getting ready to go out again, I spotted her necklace. Only, it was actually my necklace. The one that had been stolen along with the rest of my stuff. My dad got that necklace custom made just for me, so it was a one of a kind, but why did mom have it? I complimented her on it and asked her where she got it from. Blushing, she excitedly told me that this rich man she'd just started dating had bought it for her. Then she said he was taking her for dinner tonight. I forced a smile, but... My head was filled with questions. Who really was... Mom? I secretly followed my mom down the street. Suddenly, a hand patted my shoulder. Let's go. I turned around and it was Frankie. Without saying anything, I nodded and quickly got into his car. And we followed mom's taxi. Hold on. Isn't that the villa we stayed in before? After a while, a luxury car arrived, taking my mom to a nearby expensive restaurant. We peered through the glass wall. There she was. My mom was sitting there, smiling and talking with some man in a suit. Was she pretending to live in that villa to trick that man? Was my mom a gold digger? I couldn't watch any more of this, so I pulled on Frankie's arm. But weirdly, he seemed to be as shocked as I was. Um, wasn't this your idea? So why the pale face? He just shook his head and took me home. We waited in the apartment for Mom to return, and oh boy, it was tense. Around midnight, we heard the door open, and Mom walked in and looked at us in alarm. She started shooing Frankie out of there, but I interrupted her. Mom, I know everything. You've lived here for two years. You're poor, and you scam rich men. Sweetie, it's not like that. Please calm down and I'll explain everything to you. So, it turns out... After divorcing my dad, she was determined to go back to the U.S. and succeed at business. But she failed, and she was so embarrassed, she lied to me and dad. Then when she heard that I was coming to visit, she spent the little savings she had on renting a swanky villa for me. But when I accidentally spilled soy sauce on that expensive couch, she couldn't afford to fix it. So we were kicked out. 
As for the man I was with tonight, I ran into him while walking outside the villa. He's rich and nice. He likes me and I like him too. But what about that necklace? Mom, it's actually mine. It was in my stolen suitcase. My mom gave me a confused look. But before she could say anything, Frankie blurted out, That man's a fraud. Mom and I gaped at Frankie as he turned to me and said, I'm sorry, but I think you guys need to know the truth. Then Frankie told us how that man was none other than Zack's dad. After taking me back to the villa, Zack figured my mom was rich, so he persuaded his dad to come and flirt with her. But how did you dig up the dirt on these guys? Because I know Zack. When I saw Lana chasing him, I knew he'd stolen from her. But he's my friend. Great, so you've both been lying to me. Then I rushed into my room, locked the door, and burst into tears. The next morning, Mom knocked on my door, but I ignored her. Lana, I get that you're upset with me, but I've left a sandwich here, so please at least eat something. I'm really sorry. Just wanted to be the perfect mother for you. Her words caused me to sob all over again. But I can say, from the bottom of my heart, I feel sorry for her. After that, I opened the door and hugged her tightly, and then we both blubbered into each other's arms. I'm leaving L.A. today, with Mum. She's moving back to France with me, where she can start afresh. While I was dragging my suitcase to the taxi, Frankie appeared and apologized to me. I just shrugged and told him it didn't matter anymore. I mean, at least he came clean in the end and saved my mom from that swindler. Hey, rich girl, good luck. And, um, feel free to keep in touch. So, what now? Well, mom is settling back into French life. She has a new job and a chic apartment. I go and stay with her each weekend, and it's good to finally spend time with the real her. As for Frankie, well, we send each other lots of Snapchats. So, okay, maybe I kind of like him. I'm planning to visit him in the summer. Hopefully my next trip to the U.S. won't be as crazy as my last one. <laughs> hey, Beans, welcome back to my channel. I'm so cranked to introduce today's special guest, my daughter, Elle. Say hi, sweetie. Hi, we're making butter from scratch today. I'm so excited. El, can you please do this properly? Mom, it's the sixth take already. I can't even film my arms anymore. If you're still not satisfied, then film it yourself. Hey, I'm Elle, a high school student living in Wisconsin with my mom. From the outside, there's nothing out of the ordinary about us. Well, except that my mom's a vintage holic. See, she in fact became a famous YouTuber for her 1950s lifestyle. Living like this was such a hassle. But that's what puts food on our table, so I had to put up with it. However, sometimes mom even insisted that I join in her videos. Like today. Ugh. Not just that. Whenever we went out together, she made me wear the cheesiest vintage dresses. So I wouldn't ruin her aesthetic. As a hip-hop dancer, it was torture. See? I sure look way better in these clothes. Oh dear, what are those awful threads? Here, try this. It's really the bee's knees. Bee's knees, she said. More like granny. Ah, so pretty. Auntie, you have such excellent taste. That's Daisy, my cousin. And also schoolmate. Who gets along much better with my mom? Jeez, I can't let this hideous dress go home with us. If you like this so much, why don't you just take it instead, Daisy? Mom then walked to the counter with some more tacky clothes, ready to pay, but... Gee, where did I put it? <sighs> Guess I'll come back another time. Oh, missing something, Mommy? It's okay, Mrs. Faye. You're a regular, so you can pay us next time. Wait, what? No! So, now I had to wear this ugly dress to the boring event Mom was dragging me to. Because the more, the merrier. On the way there, Mom was talking a blue steak about how I should behave at the bash, when suddenly, huh? What now? Awesome! This must be the third time this hunk of junk has broken down this month! Isn't it fantastic? And we don't even have phones to call for help! Elle, I've told you, it'd be ridiculous to show up with smartphones while dressing like this! 
Besides, people used to live just fine without them. Stop relying on them so much. Trust me, some nobleman will soon come to our rescue. Stay here and wait all you want. I'm gonna go look for a garage. But I only managed a couple of steps before a fancy car pulled over, and an old man in a suit stepped out and offered to help. Turns out he's one of Mom's subscribers and even asked for a picture. Thank you so much for saving my chariot. You're the ginchiest. Gosh, here she goes again with her old-timey slangs. Eventually, we reached this Ansville, and as soon as we arrived, Mom immediately ran to her celeb friends and posed for photos, leaving me lost and confused. While I was trying to navigate through this madness, some whispering caught my attention. Isn't that Faye? She's so extra! I can't even get past the first five minutes of her videos! Oh yeah? And still, Mom thought the whole world was her fan. I don't get why she wanted to be here with these fake people that much. I was not having any of that stuffy place, so I went outside to get some air. As I wandered along the street, I spotted a group of teenagers dancing to old school hip hop. This is right up my alley. But wait, ugh, this stupid dress. My jam is coming on though. So letting my adrenaline take over, I joined the crowd. Everyone seemed impressed and even made room for me to shine. Then one of them joined me. I was really feeling it when a familiar screeching voice startled me. Elle, what on earth are you doing? Agitate the gravel now. Then mom dragged me to the car and drove me straight home. Gringles, do you understand that if anyone sees you like that, the perfect image I've built all these years will be in ruins? Pfft, then don't drag me into these things, do it alone. Mind your manners, you should find something more practical rather than dancing like those good for nothing lazy bums. I'd had enough. Furious, I stormed into my room and stayed there all night. The next morning, I woke up to the rumbling sound of an empty stomach. When the coast was clear, I went downstairs to check the fridge for food. Ew, what's that rotten egg smell? Jesus, this fridge must be from Napoleon times! I reluctantly went for an instant soup, but the microwave wouldn't even heat it up. And guess what? My mom spent over $500 just for this thing's useless 50s look. Then I decided to put on a movie to blow off some steam. But the ancient TV wouldn't turn on either. Unbelievable! Is there anything in this rusty dollhouse that actually works? I need to get out of here before going insane. Oh, there's a new family moving in next door. Hang on, isn't that the guy I was dancing with last night? He smiled and waved at me, but I could only force a smile and nodded back. Hey, why the long face? If you're bored, come give me a hand. Then he dragged me over to his yard before I could reply. Once we're done, we rested on the front porch. Turns out his name was Royce. He'd just moved in with his dad and had enrolled at my school. I have to admit, he's quite the charmer. And within minutes, I felt comfortable enough to tell him about my unconventional life with mom. My mom has way too much free time. I wish she'd find a man. Only then she might quit nagging me. Meanwhile, my dad is always busy. If he had someone by his side, he'd want to spend more time with his family and be less of a workaholic. Wait a minute. So, how about we make them... A, a couple. couple! Today is the day. Our parents have really tight schedules, so planning out this date took a lot of effort. But so far, so good. I told my mom to check out this vintage-themed restaurant in town while Royce told his dad that he wanted some father-son bonding time. Then, oops, we accidentally bump into each other and join tables. Look at my mom, gracefully fixing her hair and acting all charming. <laughs> I winked at Royce and then we made an excuse to leave the table so the adults could have some private time. It's been a little while, let's see how the two are doing. Goodness gracious, was Mr. Phillips slurping on the spaghetti? He's making a mess and mom seemed really embarrassed. We immediately rushed inside to save this date before it's too late. At the end of the evening, we thought the worst was behind us. Mr. Phillips walked out without holding the door open for mom, making it swing back in her face. Gosh, every beginning is difficult, I guess. <sighs> Over the next few days, Royce and I beat our brains out to try and find a way to save their budding relationship and came down to this. Mom, I twisted my ankle during practice. Can you please pick me up? Hey, Dad, I forgot my wallet at the practice room. Could you pick it up on the way home? Then we waited until our parents showed up and went inside to lock the door and even turn off the lights for dramatic effect. I immediately heard my mom's horrified scream. Then the room went quiet. 
I bet Mr. Phillips calmed her down. We waited a few minutes before calling the security guard to open the door, but contrary to our expectations, the one being hysterical was Mr. Phillips, who was now <laughs> sobbing in my mother's arms. Wait, what? Turns out Royce forgot that his dad, who always sleeps with a light on, is in fact nyctophobic. There goes plan B. This was bad. Everything kept going south and the clock was ticking as Royce's dad had to leave for another business trip soon. We can't accept defeat like this. There must be something your dad's really good at, right? I don't know, he's good at fixing stuff. Ha! <laughs> then we know what to do next. While mom was taking a shower, I waited for my plan to set in motion. Three, two, one. Ah! Elle, help me! I ran over to her to see water shooting out from a broken faucet. After a couple of minutes of struggle, I called Royce's house for help, aka Mr. Phillips. As soon as he arrived, he went straight into the bathroom and helped mom out of that pool. He looked way too cool, just like Superman. Now, time for his forte to speak up. As expected, he fixed it all in a blink, and mom even invited the two of them to stay for dinner as a thank you. Great! During dinner, Mr. Phillips kept praising my mom's cooking. He admitted that this coziness reminded him of the good old days. Seeing things escalate between them, Royce and I finished quickly and excused ourselves to give them some time alone. My dad's right. I can't remember the last time we sat together, as a family. Then he told me that his parents divorced a few years back, and due to his dad's work, they were always moving from place to place, which really wore him out. Seeing his sad gaze made me feel so bad for him. I just wanted to give him a hug. Hold on, what nonsense was I thinking? I immediately brushed off that weird thought, and we chatted until late. The next day at school, I was talking to Royce as usual, when suddenly our conversation was interrupted. Oh my god, aren't you the new guy? How do you know him? Huh? Where did Daisy come from? And is befriending Royce something strange? Then she whispered to me that Royce's good looks hadn't gone unnoticed by other students. Wow, no wonder I kept feeling like we were being watched whenever we hung out at school. Daisy then proceeded to chime in between us and talk to Royce non-stop, even on our way home, when clearly her house was not in the same direction as ours. How annoying! But good news, back at home mom seemed to be floating on air. I caught her humming along to love songs and she didn't nag me at all when I went to dance practice. Royce also said that his dad had been in a great mood too. Sparks were definitely flying between them. Our plan finally worked. Good job, sis. Uh huh? Was I really gonna be his stepsister? I should be happy with this outcome, right? But what was this uneasy feeling? One day at practice, I walked in on Daisy and Royce and immediately felt awkward, so I just rolled myself into a corner. Why did I react that way seeing them be so close? Is it possible that I've fallen for him? This can't be. We're gonna be family. There's no way this can happen. After that day, I tried to avoid Royce. Despite his new girl, he still bothered me, but I kept my distance. I was brooding all the way home, until I heard my mom talking on the phone as I entered the house. And I'll bake you some pecan pie, darling. Wait a minute, Royce and his dad were both allergic to pecan, so who's she being all lovey-dovey with? The next day, as usual, I told my mom I'd go to practice, but actually lingered outside the house to stalk on mom. I saw her on the couch, video calling some strange man. Oh gosh, did my mom really cheat on Royce's dad? How could she? Still in shock, I glumly lurked to Graffiti Alley and spotted Royce and Daisy there. They seemed to be talking about something really serious. So, you already knew? Yeah, ages ago. But it's clear that we can't just force love on someone. So, you mean to just give up and happily watch them see other people? Oh no, so they knew mom was unfaithful to Mr. Phillips already? How embarrassing! Right at that moment, Daisy spotted me, so I frantically ran away. After school the following day, Daisy wanted to talk with me in private. However, it was not about what happened yesterday. Do me a favor and stop hovering around Royce all the time, will you? But Royce is my friend. I can't just stop seeing him because you said so. If you like him, be my guest. Suddenly, Daisy fell to the ground. Ouch! Why did you push me? Huh? What is she doing? At that exact moment, Roy showed up and worriedly checked on her. Okay, now I know what's going on. Sorry about that. Let me give you a hand. When she was just about to stand up, I shoved her. Now you know what my real push feels like. I noticed Roy's stunned look but just walked off. Now that I don't seem so great in his eyes anymore, he'll stop approaching me. 
Sweetie, what's wrong? What's wrong? This is all your fault! If you didn't cheat on Mr. Phillips, everything would be fine! What do you mean? Cheating on whom? <laughs> then my mom burst out laughing after I told her. Turns out they never dated. They both saw through our matchmaking plan early on, but decided to just be good friends. And the person I saw mom video calling with was her boyfriend, but she hadn't introduced him yet because they'd only started dating. But why set us up in the first place? Finally, I had the chance to tell her how I truly felt about being forced into her vintage world and not being able to pursue my love for street dancing. Mom was quiet for a second, and then said, Gee, how silly I've been. I've been inspiring strangers to go after their dreams, but I stopped my own daughter from pursuing hers. I felt so much better after pouring my heart out. I also mentioned Royce's situation with his dad, and she promised to talk to him about it. Hang on. This means... Mom, so you and Mr. Phillips are just friends, right? Immediately, I ran off to find Royce, as if on cue the doorbell rang, and it was... Daisy! What game is she playing now? If she's here to mess around, come at me already. But surprisingly, Daisy apologized. I'm sorry, I was just blinded by jealousy. And there was nothing going on between me and Royce. He in fact already rejected me the day you saw us at the graffiti alley. Also, he asked me to give you this. I opened the box to see an adorable keychain with I love you on it. Oh my, is, is this a love confession? But there's also a note saying, I'm leaving for another city, till we meet again. No, no, no! I sprinted to his house right away. Oh lord, he's already packing! Without thinking, I hugged him and started sobbing. So, you read my message? Y yeah And what do you think? I, I feel the same, but you're leaving for real? Then, his smile turned playful, and he admitted he was just messing with me. Turns out he was going away, but only for a few days, for a dance competition. Really? That's awesome! But I can't forgive you for tricking me yet. So, yeah. Although we couldn't get our parents together, us two actually became a couple, so our matchmaking scheme isn't a total failure, right? <laughs> we were even able to change a few things for the better. For instance, Mom spoke to Royce's dad, and he agreed not to move for the time being so his son could settle in. Mom also promised to check in on him when his dad's away on business. As for our family, my mom no longer tried so hard to act like she's not living in 2023. She now sometimes includes modern elements in her vlogs as well, and I even become a regular <laughs> guest on her channel. Hey Beans, today my fiancé and I are baking this fab coconut cake, along with my daughter and our boyfriend. They are hip-hop dancers! Check out their channel if that's something you fancy! They're really the cat's pajamas! Sarah? It's about time you got married. What are you talking about? Get married? Not a chance. I'm still in school. Oh, give me a break. Marrying a rich guy will bring you more money than school ever will. Mom, I'm not like you. I actually like school. Now leave me alone. That was the conversation between my mom and I about two months ago. Well, look at me now. Here I am staying in one of the most luxurious villas in Boston. My name's Sarah, by the way, and I'm 16 and in high school. My life hasn't ever been normal. For starters, I don't have a dad, and my mom is totally irresponsible, choosing to spend any money we have on partying and men. Of course, she doesn't even have a job, so we rely on her latest fling to help support us. <sighs> my mom has never really cared about me, so I just stay out of her life as well. She can do what she wants as long as I can do what I want. And what I want is to study really hard so that I can have a better life than hers. But as usual, she intervened in that plan, and two months ago she forced me to quit high school and get married. Obviously, I refused, and I even went on a hunger strike for a few days. But then one day she said, Tomorrow, our two families will meet. If you don't rock up, I'll go to your school and tell them you're not coming back. But if you come, you can still go to school. At least until the wedding. Ugh. <sighs> School. She's using what I love most against me, again, to force me to follow all of her ridiculous plans. Fine. I agreed. I mean, it was just a meetup. It's not like they could pressure me to get married right away, right? So the next day, I followed my mom to go meet Adam's family. I was shocked when I saw him. He was wearing a mask that covered half of his face, and he just sat there, not uttering a word, just staring at me without even blinking. Honestly, it was so creepy. His parents seemed nice, though. 
and they explained that he'd been in an accident when he was a kid, which had left him with a severe burn scar on his face. So he wore the mask to avoid scaring people off. I could see him watching me, waiting for my reaction. So I tried to smile back. I felt so bad for him. But at the same time, there was no way I wanted to spend my life with this guy. So I decided to put my plan into action. All I had to do was get his parents to disagree with the arrangement. So I acted as clumsy as possible. I wanted to give the worst first impression ever. As soon as the wine was poured, I leaned over and knocked his mom's glass all over her white dress. My mom looked mortified, but I didn't stop there. I ate with my hands and dropped food all over the table and kept chewing with my mouth wide open. But no matter how hard I tried, Adam's parents still seemed to like me, and I could see him slightly smirking at me. What did a girl have to do to put this family off? Clearly they were desperate. Near the end of the meal, they started discussing the engagement. Apparently, I'd move into Adam's family house so we could get to know each other. Then, if I could help Adam to feel less insecure, they'd let me finish high school before we had to get married. Um, so didn't that mean they just wanted a friend for Adam? Someone to keep him company? Hmm, it's not that bad. I guess I can do that then. So after the engagement, I moved into Adam's mansion. After school every day, I'd hang out with him and try to cheer him up. I'd play him my fave music, show him some epic movies, even try telling him jokes. But still, he barely smiled. He wasn't interested in anything I liked. Then one day I was struggling with my science homework when he passed by and decided to check out what I was doing. Suddenly he started chatting away, and I realized how much he loved chemistry and physics. He even offered to help me with my assignments. He was so passionate about those subjects, and this was a win-win, because I'd finally found something we could discuss. He even started opening up to me. It was a start. I began to feel more comfortable around him. On one sunny day, I even asked Adam if he wanted to play a game of badminton. At first, he refused, as he didn't like being outside, but I wouldn't stop begging until he said, Fine. Have you played this game before? No. Okay, then let me show you. I was so excited to teach Adam. Although I'm not great at hand-eye coordination, I'd been playing badminton a lot at school, so I felt pretty confident. Finally, I'd found something I was better at than him. Ha! Huh. Okay, so I spoke too soon. After a few missed serves, he somehow mastered the shuttlecock and kicked my ass. <sighs> Why did you say you have never played this before? Because it's the truth. I, I don't believe you. Adam just shrugged and then left me lying on the ground. He had to be bluffing. It's impossible for anyone to be that good the first time they do something. Ugh. But it was fun, I guess. Adam was growing on me, but I couldn't be around him 24-7 as I had classes to attend. And no cap, I was extremely happy that I still got to go to school. Plus, at school something incredible happened. One day I was walking through the schoolyard when I tripped over a can. Just as I was about to faceplant on the ground, a hand appeared and pulled me back up. We made eye contact, and I swear it was love at first sight. His name was Brian, and he's super handsome. From that moment on, we texted nonstop every day, and it wasn't long before he asked me to be his girlfriend. And of course I said yes. I was smitten, but I obviously had to hide it from Adam and his parents. One night, I was on the phone with Brian when suddenly a text from my mom arrived. In fact, ever since the engagement, she hadn't even been in touch. Maybe she was too busy spending the huge amount of money that Adam's parents had given her. Sarah, I really need some cash. Just around $500. Can you please ask Adam if he can lend me it? What? How have you already spent the money his parents gave you? Stop asking questions. Just get me that money, okay? Ugh, money, money, money. All she cared about was money. She didn't even ask if I was okay. Um, um, I, I want to ask. Can, can you... Get me some money. Money? For what? Um, I, I need to pay for my tutoring class. I haven't had money to pay for the past few months. Mm, how much do you need? Um, about $500. Okay, I'll tell the butler he'll give it to you later. Phew, that was easier than I thought. Uh, but Adam didn't ask twice about it. Was it because that amounts just nothing to a rich guy like him? Anyway, at least he'd said yes. That would shut my mom up for a bit. If only... 
A few days later, she texted me again. This time she wanted $3,000. Was she kidding me? I just ignored her. But she kept bombarding me with texts and calls. It went on for days. She wouldn't leave me alone. I didn't give in, though. Until this photo was sent to my phone. It was of me and Brian holding hands and clearly in love. Turns out my mom had been so desperate for the money, she'd turned up at my school one day to talk face to face, and that's when she saw us together. She then threatened me and said that if I didn't get her the money, she'd tell Adam's family what I was up to. This terrified me, because then I'd have nowhere to go, and I wouldn't be able to go to school anymore. I couldn't let that happen. I had no other choice but to keep asking Adam for the money with my lame excuses. From buying books, to a relative who was ill and needed treatment, you name it, I'd use it. Every time I asked Adam, he looked at me like he was worried about me and asked if I was okay. This made me feel even more guilty, because it seemed like he genuinely cared about me. To make up for it, I'd bake him cookies, and even knit a cute sweater for him as a birthday gift. But then, a few weeks later, he asked if we could talk. As soon as I walked into his room, he threw a bunch of photos at me. They were all of me and Brian. I couldn't believe it. Did my mother betray me? But that's not the case. He told me how he'd had someone follow me because he felt I'd been acting weird. Not only had he discovered I was dating someone, he'd also found out that I'd been lying about the money and giving it to my mom. He was so disappointed in me. Please leave me alone. I don't want to see you anymore. I was so worried I'd be kicked out of their house, but no one mentioned anything. His parents still chatted to me at dinner and they seemed happy enough. Only Adam avoided me, which of course made me feel terrible. The only one I had to lean on right now was my sweet Brian. So after dinner one night, I decided to go over to his place. I really needed some comfort right now. But when I arrived outside, through the window, I saw another girl in his room. They started kissing. And I thought I was going to be sick. In a panic, I quickly crawled over and hid below his window to listen in. But... Aren't you a bit too close with that Sarah girl lately? Don't you dare. Don't worry, Pumpkin. It was all just for you. I noticed that she lives in a big mansion, with personal drivers and all. Her family must be filthy rich. So, I just wanted to be a good friend and help them spend those money. You know, and maybe that way, I could get you the new Chanel handbag that you always want. Oh, really, honey? So, how's it going? Well, a dud. Seems like she's the stingy kind of rich girl. Ugh, keeping every single nickel all to herself. How was I supposed to believe what I'd just heard? My heart was shattered into pieces, and I couldn't hold it in anymore. I stood up and put my face against the window. You're dumped! Brian looked so shocked to see me there. But I didn't wait to see if he had anything to say. I just ran home in tears and locked myself in my room. Sarah, open the door. Do you know how many days you haven't eaten for? Sarah, open the door. If not, I will send someone to break the door down. Oh, God, are, are you okay? What's going on? Nothing. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for lying to you all this time. I, I didn't mean to. Suddenly, Adam hugged me and said, It's okay. Don't cry. Now can you just tell me what happened? In tears, I told Adam the whole story. From being used by my mother to being betrayed by Brian. Perhaps this is what I deserve for lying to you. Actually, if I were you, I wouldn't want to marry someone like me anyway. You're a great guy. As long as you have confidence in yourself and live with a more positive attitude, good things will happen to you, I promise. Even with this ugly face? I looked up at Adam and, oh my gosh, the burn scar on his face. It was worse than I thought it would be. I reached out to touch it. It must have been so painful. Can we, can, can we start over? Keep helping me, okay? I looked at Adam, smiled and nodded. So after that day, I continued to stay at Adam's house and help him get out of the isolated, self-deprecating life he'd been living. Gradually, his attitude improved and he even started taking a business course to get ready for taking over his family's company in the future. I also encouraged him to start taking off his mask. Love everything about yourself, including that scar. 
As for my mom, she's currently being detained for her illegal gambling. Yep, that's what she spent all of that money on. She'll probably end up in prison. And even though this isn't what I want for her, she kind of deserves it. Oh, and about the wedding. We postponed it. Lucky for me, both Adam and his parents want me to go to college first and pursue my dreams. Once I graduate, we'll probably start planning our wedding, though. And it'll be truly out of love this time. <laughs> Five, six, seven, eight. Wow, honey. You're so good. Oh, no. Now I'd lost count. Um, how long had she been standing there for? Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to startle you. Can you teach me some moves? I hesitated, but I didn't want to sound mean, so... Um, sure, Carol. Come in. I'll show you some of the basics. I did some simple moves for her to follow, but... Oh, man. She was awful. Seeing an out-of-shape, middle-aged woman attempting front lunges and high Vs isn't something you see every day. <laughs> But I did appreciate that she was putting the effort into getting to know me. Oh, sorry. You must be wondering why I was calling my mom by her first name. Well, she's actually not my mom. She's my stepmom. You see, my mom passed away when I was 10. Then last year, when I turned 15, Dad started seeing someone again with help of a matchmaker. And he thought it was important for me to have a mother figure. And that's how he ended up marrying Carol. I enjoyed having bonding time with Carol, but it quickly became kind of uncomfortable. She watched me practice my cheerleading moves every night, started up conversations about the boys at my school, and she insisted on binge-watching TV series with me. Yeah, you all must know how awkward it is having an adult sitting next to you while there's some romantic kissing scene on the screen, right? Jesus, I needed my privacy. Then one time, I arrived home from school to find her in my room, going through my makeup. Donna, sweetie, how exactly do you use this? <sighs> okay, so this was a bit too much. She's crossing some lines here, messing around with my stuff without asking, but I couldn't bring myself to get mad at her either. You see, Carol is the definition of an ideal housewife. She's such a kind-hearted woman, and she always kept the house immaculate and cooked delicious meals. Maybe she spent so much time doing this that she didn't have any time to take care of her appearance? Hey, everyone deserves to feel beautiful, right? So, I showed her how to apply makeup. Carol, you do so much for Dad and me, so I think it's about time you treated yourself. How about we go to the mall tomorrow? I would love to. I thought I was doing something nice for her. Little did I know, this was the start of something crazy. The next day at the mall, I took her into a clothing store where women her age shopped. I held up a nice blouse, but she shook her head. Then, to my utter dismay, she insisted we go into the Pull and Bear store next door. But Carol, that's for teenagers! But she still marched us in there. Then she pointed at an outfit and asked me if I could try it on for her. <sighs> I wanted today to be about her, not me. But okay, as long as she's happy. I stepped out of the dressing room and twirled, and the store staff immediately complimented me. Then, Carol suddenly turned to the staff and asked them to get the exact dress in size XL. What? Was she going to wear that too? Carol coyly stepped out from behind the curtain and asked, So, what do you think? I froze for a moment. I mean, Look at her! She looked ridiculous! But I couldn't tell her that, so I reluctantly gave her a thumbs up. And just like that, Carol bought us both the exact same dress. But there's more. She suggested that we both wear them right now, while we were still in the mall! I spluttered out, Um, shouldn't we save them for a special occasion? But her mind was made up. So, there we were daughter and stepmom walking through the mall in matching dresses. I could feel all eyes were on us. We even ran into one of my friends, and she mistook Carol for my cousin. At least, that was until she saw Carol's face. That poor girl looked like she'd just seen Annabelle. Carol sure was flattered, as on the way home she beamed as she said, To think, your friend thought I was your cousin. <laughs> I should dress like you more often. It takes years off me. And I kid you not, 
She actually meant it. From that moment onward, she started dressing like a teenage girl. Or, to be precise, like me. Exactly like me. Apparently, I was the only one finding it weird in the house. Because my dad said nothing. I needed to talk to her, or else someone at school would see me and make fun of me. So that evening, I went downstairs to see Carol sitting on the couch, reading some magazine. I took a deep breath and said, Um, Carol, can we... Oh, hi, sweetie. Look, I'm choosing a cake for your upcoming birthday party. I hope that's okay. Oh, no. Why is she always so sweet and kind? This made me feel so bad. She's doing so much for me, and all I do is complain. So obviously, I didn't bring up the subject of her copying my style. That's just trivial, right? Instead, I sat next to her and we talked about the birthday party. Then she showed me some pretty dresses on her phone and asked me to pick one for my party. Hmm, I really like this one. Carol smiled. Oh, that looks lovely. Great choice, sweetie. Imagine how stunning we'll look in these. We? Oh, no, not again. It had to be now or never to talk to her about this. Carol, um, I don't think we... But at that exact moment, my dad arrived back from work. What are you two still doing up so late? Before I could say anything, Carol ran over to him. Donna and I are going to wear this dress on her birthday. What do you think? Great. Anything that makes my ladies happy. I couldn't go through the humiliation of being dress buddies with Carol for one more time. On my special day, I needed to do something. I had a plan, but the timing had to be faultless. So, on the day of my party, when Carol was ironing her dress, I rushed in and told her that the delivery guy had just dropped off the wrong cake. Carol freaked out and ran downstairs immediately. Ha! Huh, it worked! Now, let's get started. And, well, ten minutes later, as expected, we all heard a loud scream coming from upstairs. Dad and I rushed in and saw Carol sitting on the bed crying into the dress. Darling, what's wrong? She held up the dress. L look, it's ruined! There was an iron-shaped burn mark on it. Yep, you guessed it. It was all me. When Carol left the room, I turned the iron's temperature to max. My god, I really had to pinch myself trying not to laugh. But suddenly, Carol turned to me and in a serious voice said, You need to change to another dress. What? She can't be serious, right? It's okay, Carol. You can just wear another dress. I don't mind. No, it's not okay. We've planned this. Go get the blue one that we both have. Listen, I don't think we should dress the same. It's just weird. Then my dad jumped in. There's no time to argue. The guests are already waiting downstairs. So Donna, go get changed. Ugh, unbelievable. It was so embarrassing. All my relatives were complimenting us, but I knew they were really laughing inside. My friends, on the other hand, were sniggering and telling me we looked like a budget version of the Olsen twins. <sighs> I thought that day was already a nightmare but then it got extremely annoying when she even started to copy my behavior. One evening, my boyfriend Thomas came over and we were all eating pizza in the living room. I took a bite and said, OMG, delish! And the next thing I knew, Carol was quoting those words of mine as she sipped on her Diet Coke. Cringy! Then later, when Thomas had to leave, I walked him to the door and I squeezed his cheeks as a cute little goodbye since we couldn't exactly kiss or anything in front of my parents, obviously. But guess what? Just under five minutes later, Carol suddenly sat closer to my dad and did the exact same thing to him. It was so weird, and my dad wasn't really impressed either. But here comes the worst part. A few days later, my friend had sent me a link to Carol's TikTok account. Oh. My. Days. It was a video of my dad, and it had thousands of likes. Then suddenly, I heard noises coming from downstairs. Carol? Carol! Carol scampered out of the kitchen looking clueless. What's wrong, honey? What's wrong? My colleague just sent me a video of you playing a prank on me. Everybody has seen it. 
Even my boss, my customers, everyone! How am I supposed to go to work now? Ruining my career. Is that what you want? So much for being an accident. Yep. The video I was talking about was this one, where Carol baked a fruitcake for my dad and then smashed his face into it. Then, when he looked up, he had two strawberry slices stuck to his eyes. He kind of looked like that creepy clown from the movie It. She uploaded it on her TikTok account, and it instantly got viral. I played that prank on my friend a while ago at our slumber party, but I didn't expect that Carol would copy it. Get out of my house! My dad's shout took me aback, while Carol burst into tears and begged. Please, honey, don't do this. I'm sorry. But my dad didn't listen and just told her to pack and stay out of his sight immediately. As she started to move, I grabbed her arm. Carol, wait. I know that you've been copying my clothing style and my behavior, and now this TikTok. But you must have a reason for that, right? Carol nodded, so I calmed dad down, and we sat down with her as she sobbed out. My first husband often made fun of my dreary appearance. He even banned me from going to his family events, as he said the way I looked was embarrassing for him. Then eventually, he couldn't stand looking at me anymore, so he handed me the divorce papers. Now I'm with your father. I worry he too will get irritated by my looks, and I'll be abandoned again. But he adores you. Therefore, I thought that if I tried to be more like you, then he'd adore me too. My God, Carol's ex is such a jerk. How could anybody want to get a divorce just because their partner didn't have the best dressing sense? I hugged her tightly and said, Nobody's going to abandon you. You're a part of this family. But how about we find you a new style of your own, instead of copying mine, okay? Carol nodded at me with a light smile while still sniffling. My dad eventually calmed down, apologized for overreacting, and came over to join us in the hug. So after that, I started helping Carol with the house chores so she had more time to spend on herself. I showed her how to style her hair, helped her pick out some stylish clothes, and sent her the links to some videos on makeup tips. Now she has her own chic image going on. She kind of reminds me of Martha Stewart. <laughs> I always thought my stepmom was bonkers, but turns out everyone's got their own story, right? And we should get to know them first before jumping into any conclusion. Everybody should feel good about themselves, and no one should ever make them feel otherwise. Oh my, look at those dudes over there. It's so true that all men are the same. All it takes is seeing some pretty girls and their eyes immediately light up. I was about to ignore these jerks, but then this couple walked in holding hands. Instantly, the jerks started making a fuss. Ew, look! That's gross! Then they pretended to retch. Jeez, these idiots needed to keep their outdated views to themselves. Well done, guys. You've just booked yourself the 99th place on the playbook. <laughs> Let me show you my playbook. In here, you'll find all types of men, from nerds, hot boys, jocks, and successful businessmen. But they all have one thing in common. They are all bad. Hi, I'm Monica, and I'm a playgirl who was trained to take revenge on men. Since I was little, I was taught that all men are bad, and it's my duty as a woman to teach them a lesson, especially homophobes and womanizers. Now all that's missing is the 100th prey? Then done! Hey sis, family meeting now! Oops, duty called. Mom's gonna reveal our final mission. Now, where are my books and pens? <laughs> yeah, those two are my colleagues and also my competitors. They're Cindy, my impulsive little sister, and next to her is Grace, my older, super smart, and slightly more mature sister. As for me, I'm something in between. Not as childish as Cindy, but not as calm and collected as Grace. Oh, here's Mom. Okay, let's get to the point. So this is it. The last goal. And it's the biggest one yet. So, this time you're not working together, but on your own. This target won't be easy. But you all have your own charms, and I have every faith in you all. And the time starts... Now! Hmm, Dennis Groff. Dennis Groff. Let's see. 
Oh, he's quite handsome. The son of a CEO and super rich. Hmm, it figures he's a lady killer, duh. But why did mom assign him to us? I mean, she usually just lets us set our own goals. Also, why do we have to compete against each other? Maybe it was because it was the 100th target, so she was making it extra challenging? We all love mom and want to please her. I mean, who doesn't want to be the last one to complete the family playbook, right? I stayed up all night making a plan of action. Hmm, from my social media stalking, I found out that Dennis's friend was having birthday celebrations at a bar in town tomorrow night. So, the next evening, I put on the sexiest red dress that I've bought for this specific occasion and walked confidently into the bar. All eyes were on me, except Dennis's. Excuse me? Was he going to the bar for free Wi-Fi or what? Seeing that, I took a glass of wine and gently approached him. But suddenly, a strange guy came out of nowhere and pulled my hand back. Honey, where are you going? Have a drink with me? Get out of the way. I'm busy. I was about to turn my attention back to my prey when, oops, the strange guy tripped me up, causing me to stumble onto the ground. This was so embarrassing. I guess I just have to call it a night. <sighs> but suddenly, an arm appeared in front of me. I looked up and, hey, it was Dennis? I was a bit surprised, but quickly regained my confidence and let him help me up. After that, he offered to buy me a drink, and then we ended up chatting into the early hours. And Jackpot! Turned out, he's as big of a golf lover as I was, so I persuaded him to join a golf club with me. Ain't that a smart move? A week later, and it was progress report day. One by one, we told Mom what we'd done so far. Cindy tried hard to approach Dennis by coming to the billiard hall that he frequented, and being the typical impulsive kid that she is, she bombarded Dennis with messages on social networks. She seems to be quite optimistic, though, as Dennis responded to her quite friendly, and the two kind of vibed when it came to billards. As for Grace, she applied for the position of assistant manager at Dennis's company. I know. Man, my sister is a genius. She even said that she already felt some chemistry going on, as he wouldn't take his eyes off of her. Mom seemed impressed with the progress we'd made so far. Everyone's attained certain achievements, but sure thing, I was still in the lead. I felt it. I don't know if I'm being delusional, but Dennis and I were getting so close, and he had also shown some gestures of concern for me. Hmm. Anyway, it appears that I'll have to work even harder than I first thought to win this one. Yeah, I did used to wonder if what Mom always said about men was 100% true, and why my sisters and I had to do all this. Until one day, back when I was 16, that day, I was going into my mom's room to borrow some jewelry for catfishing when I found an open notebook on the ground. Curious, I picked it up and discovered it was mom's diary. And it was in a tragic story. She once fell deeply in love with a man, but then ran into him with someone else. Worse, she didn't even have a chance to confront him. Instead, she got his message right away. I knew the truth already. You're not a real woman. We're over. Not a real woman was what that Nick called my mom. Ridiculous. Just because my mom is a transgender? She did not go through all this pain and heartache to be disrespected like that. My mom's life was tragic, like a movie. Curiously, I flipped through it all from the beginning, and my heart felt like it's actually breaking, finding out what mom had been through. Turned out, she and Nick were part of a group of three back in high school, alongside Maureen. Nick and Maureen were a couple, so my mom, as Jack at that time, had to keep her love from Nick a secret and poured it all into this diary. Unfortunately, Maureen found out her secret and exposed it to the whole school, which made everyone make fun of my mom and she had to leave in shame. After so many years, she was still not able to forget Nick so she decided to do the trans surgery to return to find him and fight for her love. They had some happy months together, but on that one disastrous day, she found out that he cheated on her, and it was with none other than Maureen. Harsh! How can people be so cruel to each other like that? Mom was a good person, and thanks to her, orphans like Cindy, Grace, and I could have a home. 
I owed so much to her, which is why I was desperate to succeed at her last mission and to make her happy. Back to the mission. Everything was going great between me and Dennis. He took me to the golf club and out for dinner. For a rich businessman type, I had to admit that he wasn't all stern and serious. Actually, he was a lot of fun to be around. Then, when he dropped me off after a date, he touched my hand and said, Monica, I'm really enjoying getting to know you, and I would like it very much if you would come and have dinner with my family tomorrow. Whoa, this was great! I mean, this project would be way easier now I had an open invite to scope out his family. <laughs> but, no, what is this feeling? I had butterflies in my stomach, and my palms were sweaty. It must just be the thrill of meeting Dennis's family, right? But why couldn't I stop thinking about his cute laugh and his dreamy eyes? Oh no, I think I might have actual feelings for him. From then on, I found myself wanting to scream and throw stuff at Cindy and Grace every time I heard them bragging about how close they were getting to Dennis. I'm crazy, aren't I? Now what? Am I the predator or the prey? <sighs> OMG, I'm so nervous, I literally can't stop shaking. Whoa, they looked so wealthy and classy. His parents were both really sweet, and I soon felt a lot more relaxed. We had dinner, and the conversation flowed easily. There was just one thing that kept bothering me. His dad's name is Nick? Surely this was a coincidence, right? I mean, Nick's a popular name. Something didn't sit right with me so I knew I needed to say something to mom. I anxiously walked back and forth until I heard her car pull up outside. Mom, is... is Dennis's father... that man? She looked stunned, then slowly sat down, sighed, and told me everything. Just like I thought, she picked Dennis to be the 100th target, or more like a bait, just to take revenge on Nick. Furthermore, she wanted us to use Dennis to make Nick go bankrupt. But what did Dennis do? If you have a problem with Nick, then talk to him. Why drag his innocent son into it? Mom and I were having a heated argument when Cindy and Grace approached. What's wrong with you? Stop being so smitten. Mom just wants to use us as tools for personal revenge, and she doesn't love us at all. Don't be so insolent. I see that you're letting your emotions screw up your decision. Nick treated our mom badly, so his son deserves to pay the price for this. You know how much pain he caused, mom? Don't you want to fight for her? Wow, you totally suck and are an awful person. I couldn't stay here and listen to any more of this, so I rushed out of there and went and stayed with my friend. I have no idea what I'm meant to do now. One thing's for sure, I can't go through with mom's revenge plan anymore. Maybe I should go find Nick and ask him to sit down with Mom and talk things through. Unfortunately, I underestimated my sisters, as I was scrolling through my phone when I saw a post from Cindy, exposing Dennis as a womanizing jerk who dated three girls at the same time. As proof, she'd inserted pictures of Dennis with each of us. Trust her to do something so childish. It gets worse as Grace linked up with a hacker to splatter the company's website with things like Mr. Nick Groff, the president of Groff Corporation, is a liar, traitor, and homophobe. This media crisis has caused the whole company to suffer, and now Dennis was avoiding my calls. I was hovering my finger over the call button when at that precise moment, Grace texted me. Hey sis, you better not miss the sacred moment we tick off number 100 in the playbook. The mission is over anyway. Let's just go home and make up. Mom's waiting. No way was I going to let them do this. So I immediately called Dennis and left an urgent voicemail, telling him that he needed to get his father and go around to my house ASAP. As I led them inside, Mr. Groff and Mom's eyes all widened when seeing each other. Nick stood there frozen, while Mom just asked him to leave immediately. But eventually, I managed to convince them to all sit down and sort this mess out. Jean... I worked out straight away that you were Jack. I was shocked at first, but then I realized it didn't matter, as I truly loved you. So I just wanted to wait until you were ready to tell me. You knew it? Impossible! We used to be very close friends. 
It's really not difficult for me to recognize Jack's habits. Besides, your face still retains some of the old features. Whatever. But I saw you with that snake, Maureen. And you even had the cheek to break up with me through one cynical text. Do you know how much pain I had to suffer to pursue you? Nick looked genuinely confused. Then things slowly revealed themselves. So Maureen was the one who sent that cruel message on that day. When she found out about my mom and Nick, she investigated and discovered that mom was actually Jack. That day at the coffee house, she begged Nick to take her back, but he refused. So she made up some excuse to borrow Nick's phone, then sent that message to break them apart. My mom sat there in shocked silence. I guess she was processing the fact that she took revenge on the wrong person. And now she'd caused problems for two innocent people. I'm so sorry. I let my emotions overrule me and make me bitter. I promise I will put this right. I am Jean Wilkins, a transgender woman and Nick Groff's ex. I thought he betrayed me, and this made me turn into an angry version of myself, who became blinded by my desire for revenge. Only, I was wrong. You see, it's impossible that Nick has any ill will toward the LGBT community, because he loved me. As for his son, Dennis, he's a good man who got caught up in the crossfire. He's never cheated on anyone, so please don't judge him for something he hasn't done. As I watched the video, I felt immensely proud of my brave mom. She'd made a lot of mistakes, but she'd publicly owned up to them, which took a lot of courage. Thankfully, the video worked. Nick's company has recovered, and Dennis's name was cleared. So, what happens next? Well, me and my sisters apologized to Dennis and Nick. Luckily, they are both very kind and understanding guys. Mom doesn't hold grudges against men anymore, and she's even started dating this lovely man named Jacob. Cindy met this sweet girl called Beverly, who, thinking about it, is pretty much her opposite, but they're actually kinda cute together. Grace is still single and focusing on her career. And me? I will never touch this ever again, cause I'm sticking with this prey forever. Bye, Auntie. I waved to her. I promise I'll be fine at home alone. That's good. I'll be back soon, B. Then she left. That's my Auntie Anna. I was staying with her while my parents were on vacation. I was about to walk back into the living room when the doorbell rang, so I immediately ran to the door and looked through the peephole. Ah, it was Mom! I quickly opened the door and rushed out to hug her tightly. Mommy, how come you're back so early? Mom stroked my hair and softly said, Oh, sweetie, I came to pick you up. How can I leave my little princess alone? Now hurry up and pack your things. I gave a confused look. But Auntie Anna's at the grocery store. Shouldn't we wait for her? She shook her head. No, sweetie, I already called her. So we quickly packed my things, and Mom led me outside to a rather old car, which was completely different from our usual BMW. Mom, where's Dad? This isn't our car. I asked her. She knelt in front of me and smiling said, Daddy's waiting for us at the beach. It's going to be lots of fun. I jumped up and down excitedly. Yay! I couldn't wait to build sandcastles and splash in the sea. This was so cool. On the way, I must have fallen asleep, as when I opened my eyes, it was already dark outside. I got out of the car and looked around. Hmm... Where was the ocean? All I saw was some small house in an unfamiliar neighborhood. Beatrice, this is our new home. Just you and me from now on. Mom's sudden words totally woke me up. Mom, why? What about Dad? I stammered. Listen, I'm sorry. I can't explain it to you at the moment. You're too young to understand. I had so many questions flying around my head, but looking at Mom's sad face, I knew I shouldn't ask her anymore. The next morning, I woke up excited and curious about our new beginning here. I opened the curtain and saw a group of kids my age playing across the street. 
so without thinking, I rushed outside to join them. Hello, I'm Beach. Suddenly, my mom came out of nowhere, a frantic look on her face as she shouted, I told you to stay inside, and pulled me back home. Everyone was gawping at us, including the man who lived across the street. It was so embarrassing. As soon as the door slammed shut, in a serious tone, she said, We just moved here. You shouldn't make friends with strangers that fast. And don't talk too much about yourself, okay? Mom had never minded me playing with other kids before. So why now? This didn't make any sense. After that, she only let me out of the house for school. And she always kept an eye on me. So that's why I couldn't make any friends here. I resented her so much. I was so lonely. One good thing about it was she didn't have any house rules, so I could spend all day watching cartoons while eating junk food, and she didn't mind at all. This was great, as before we moved here, Mom and Dad never let me do stuff like this. But eventually, I got sick of those junk foods. I felt kind of icky. I longed for Mom's special spaghetti with crab sauce, so I begged her to make it. At first, she refused, saying that she was very busy. So I kept on whining until she finally agreed. Later, I went to the kitchen for dinner, and the room was an utter chaos. Pots and pans everywhere. Mom looked messy, too, as she passed me a plate of spaghetti and meatballs instead of her signature dish. Well, okay, it looked delicious anyway, so I took a full fork of it as Mom watched on. Poof! <laughs> water! I need water! Gosh! It's so salty. Mom quickly replaced my pasta plate with a box of fried chicken and said, Today I'm busy, so I was a bit distracted. Sorry, honey. Her awkwardness made me laugh. Nah, it's okay, Mom. Mom did seem really busy lately, as her phone was always buzzing. The calls even came late at night when I was asleep, so she always quietly went out to answer it. Guess it's hard being a single mom after all, so I tried to be more understanding. And just like that, time passed. Staying inside and having no friends became the norm for me. Still, I often sat by the window and stared longingly at the kids playing outside. Then one time, when I was doing this, Mom appeared and asked me if I wanted to go to the nearby amusement park. Wow, could there be anything better than this? I leaped up, clapped excitedly, then wrapped my arms around her. Honestly, the park was pretty small and everything seemed kind of tired looking. But this didn't matter, as it was the best day I'd ever had. Mom never used to like rides or games, but today was different. She even got excited when she saw the beanbag throwing stall. She knocked the tins down in one go and won me this giant cuddly bunny. I've never seen her have fun like this before. My mom is so cool. Afterward, Mom left me sitting on a bench, and she went off to get some ice cream. Suddenly, I saw her rushing back, and without ice creams. She pulled on my hand, and in an urgent tone said, We need to go home. We're moving. So, we packed up our things and left in a rush. I kept on asking Mom what was going on, but she dodged my questions. During the car journey, I heard her mutter to herself, We're going somewhere new. It'll be exciting. A new adventure. Yes, it'll be fine this time. I may have been young, but I wasn't stupid. I knew she was hiding something. But she's my mom, and I didn't want to upset her by bugging her with questions. So I stayed quiet and eventually fell asleep. Once again, I woke up in an unfamiliar place and stared out of the window. I wasn't as bothered about this place as I was about the last. I didn't want to get too attached to it, as I didn't know how long it'd be before mom made us move again. But there was one thing that bothered me. Across the street was a man looking straight at our new house. Hmm. He looked identical to our previous neighbor. Maybe he'd just moved here too? What a coincidence. I mentioned the man to mom, but she told me she didn't know him, and then sternly told me never to interact with him. At school, I was the strange kid who didn't talk to anyone. The older I got, the worse this felt. And the other kids laughed at me, and I heard them call me weird behind my back. I felt so lonely and depressed. So at home, I often just sat by the window with a book and tried to pretend that the adventures I was reading about were happening to me. 
Worse still, Mom was acting even odder than usual. The other day when I got home from school, I found her chucking perfectly good food out of the fridge. Some were even brand new. I asked her what she was doing and she replied, It's gone off, so I'm getting rid of it. Then she started scrubbing the fridge. The smell won't go. Why won't it go? What was she talking about? Everything seemed fine. What's happening? Then I discovered that Mum often left the house late at night and didn't return till dawn. I knew if I asked her about this, she wouldn't say anything. So that night, I snuck out and followed her. Mum was wearing dark clothes with a hat and a big scarf covering her face, even though it's not that cold outside. Hmm, why the disguise? Then, can you believe it? I spotted her going over to the neighbor's house and cuddling him on his porch. I jumped out of the darkness and shouted, Mom, what's going on? I thought we weren't meant to talk to this man. She gave me an alarmed look. I... At that moment, Mom received a text. In a panicked voice, she said to me, Beatrice, we have to go. Now, I'll explain everything later, I promise. Right after that, the mysterious man waved at us and told us to get in his car. Then he sped through the night. After regaining my senses, I turned to my mom and asked, I hope this explanation is good. Um, actually, we're in danger, honey. It's your dad. He's an imposter. I only figured this out when I was on vacation with him and I've been running from him ever since. What? I'd never suspected my dad of being someone else. It made no sense. Then, through sobs, my mom continued to say that my real dad was actually a member of a secret organization, but he had been missing for a while, and now the organization was after us. She often received anonymous messages and calls threatening her. She didn't want me talking to strangers in case they were spies. And those times when she threw all the food out was because she'd received texts threatening to poison the food in our house. She wiped her tears away, then said, This is Joe. We went to college together, and he's been such a help. We fell in love, but I didn't dare tell you because I was afraid you wouldn't understand. I looked at this Joe guy. I don't know. There was something off about him. But maybe I was just being paranoid. I mean, he had helped Mom out, right? Ah, what's that? Ever since I found out about the secret organization, I've been kind of jittery. What if they suddenly turn up and take me and my mom away? I know mom's worried too, as she seemed so distant. I just want to make things better for us both. Then Christmas arrived. It was quite the special one, as for the first time since we went into hiding, we had guests. Well, one guest, Joe. We raised our glasses for a Merry Christmas, but instead of putting it down, my mom gulped it back in one go. Mom, are you drinking tonight? I asked skeptically. Of course, my dear. It's Christmas. Let me tell you, I'm no less than a man when it comes to drinking. <laughs> I chewed on my lip as I thought about this. Mom had an alcohol allergy, and at the most, she only had tiny sips. Suddenly, a thought came to mind. Maybe Dad wasn't the imposter after all. Maybe it had been Mom all along. She enjoyed the roller coaster rides, though to my recollection, Mom was afraid of heights. She couldn't cook, she now loved Joe, a strange man, and she could down alcohol without being ill. If this was true, then who could I trust now? Something wasn't right. I could feel it in my gut. So the next day, I secretly went to the cops instead of school as usual. Then I found out something crazy. Turns out, my real parents had been looking for me for over the past six years. O-M-G. As for the mother I was living with, who was she? I tried to stay calm while waiting for the police to contact my parents first. And as soon as they got there, the three of us broke down in tears. That's when my real mom told the whole truth. Actually, she had a twin sister called Linda. No one had ever known about Linda, as due to her debt problems, my grandpa rejected her and forbade her to ever show up in front of anyone in the family. But my mom couldn't disown her own twin, so she secretly gave her money. Then one time, 
Linda was asking for too much that Mum turned her down. Unexpectedly, she came and took me away to pressure my mom to send her more money. During that time, my mom kept transferring her money to make sure I'd be provided for. She hadn't given any information about Linda to the cops, though, because mom still wanted to talk to her first, though, so that her sister wouldn't end up in trouble. Wow, this was a lot to take in. After that, mom ran over to dad who's in line to talk to the police. She grabbed his hand and begged him to give Auntie Linda a chance. Um, as you see, I missed out on having a normal childhood because of my aunt, and what she did was wrong. But there's a part of me that will always care for her, as she raised me for all these years. And my heart urged me to say, Dad, I didn't want to turn her in either. My dad looked at me hesitantly, but in the end, he nodded in agreement. So we decided to deal with it ourselves without the intervention of the police. Then, the next day as planned, I was in the front yard with my fake mom when her identical twin marched up to her house and confronted her. Once my Auntie Linda got over the initial shock, she confessed everything to me. <sighs> it was sad, but glad that it's all over now. Mom paid off her sister's debts with one condition, that she would never, ever get near me again. Now I'm back home, with my actual parents. It's going to take some getting used to, as I've forgotten how to make friends. And going outside alone makes me nervous. Looks like the memories of the adventure with my uninvited Aunt Linda might follow me for quite some more time. I know I have to try and move forward. I can't get back the past six years, but I can do my best to try and embrace the future.